What if you could do all your banking without ever having to run to your bank? What if you could do your banking from any stadium or city in the country? It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. With traditional banks, online and mobile banking, it couldn't be more simple. My life moves pretty fast, and traditional banks team protects me while I do what I do best, at home or far away. Way to go, traditional bank. You scored again. Traditional bank, online and mobile banking. Winners at home and on the road. Traditional bank. Kentucky Children's Hospital is here to care for Kentucky's kids. From primary care to serious illness, we are specially trained to address their unique needs. Kentucky Children's Hospital is one of only two hospitals in the state with specially trained pediatric surgeons, a level four NICU for the tiniest babies, a pediatric ICU, and a 24-hour pediatric emergency room to care for the most critically ill or injured children. We are here to provide whatever care your child needs. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's ball game. Lexington Catholic hopes to pave the way for the future of high school sports broadcasting through this exciting new digital network. If you would like to get your business into the game as a night vision sponsor, please contact Delane Thiel at 277-7183, extension 253, or dthiel at lexingtoncatholic.com. Go Knights! Are you a Kentucky high school sports fan? Do you know where to find the latest news and information on your team, your competition, and high school sports action across the state? Join the fun and excitement at BluegrassPreps.com. You can support your favorite team, test your sports knowledge, and share news and views at BluegrassPreps.com. For all the latest on Kentucky high school sports, other sports, and a whole world of lively discussion, get on board at BluegrassPreps.com. Well, welcome to Joseph K. Ford uh, Stadium tonight on the campus of Lexington uh, Catholic as tonight the Knights host the Covington Catholic Colonels out of Park Hills, Kentucky for uh, high school football. Gary Ball with uh, Coach Mike Meehan. Donnie Walker also joins us tonight. Uh, he'll be in for Coach Meehan next week. He'll be at a wedding. And Coach Meehan, uh, you know, you and I have done a number of these uh, Lexcath, uh, Covcath games, but it's kind of a different menu now because Covcath has moved up to 5A. Lexcath has dropped down to 3A. Both teams with the record not so good this year, but both uh, really solid football. Football teams. Well, I, I personally think both teams are better than their record shows. Mm -hmm. uh, we've watched we've watched Le uh, Lexington Catholic develop into a team with Mark Perry uh, finally coming along, getting these guys to follow the system and do the things he wants them to do. I'm really impressed with uh, with their quarterback. I like the way their receivers. Now we've heard that they have some receivers hurt tonight. Mm -hmm. And legend Brumball will go tonight. Uh, Donnie Walker with us as well. And uh, the lefty uh, quarterback, he's a solid quarterback. His numbers speak for themselves. He's the number two uh, quarterback in Class 3A football in the state of Kentucky. Yeah, I'm really proud of legend. He's, uh, he's really worked very hard. He's, worked, he's done a lot of work in the offseason to get to where he is now. And, and I'm glad that he's got an opportunity. Plus, he's working with the really, really good uh, head coach here with Mark Perry, who knows quarterback play as well as anybody. Lexington Catholic, of course, I don't want to tell you guys, defense is going to be the key tonight. Cuff Calf lost to Timmerman, their uh, star linebacker, last week to an ACL. First game of the year, they lose their star running back, Ben Darlington, to a, a, a broken leg injury. So a lot of injuries for this Cuff Calf team. And Eddie Evanston thinking, you know, takes over at Cuff Calf. Of course, he won a state title at Newport Catholic right. and coach at Georgetown College. And he takes over for Cuff Calf. But he, one thing you cannot plan on, Coach, I don't have to tell you, is injuries. No, you can't plan on injuries and you can't plan on weather. I think both of these teams should do well with the weather. I'll tell you who I'm going to look for tonight. I'm really curious to watch the tight end back for, for uh, Covington Catholic. He's got, this guy's six foot three, six foot four. He can get open, and he can do some damage to the Knights. And also, uh, Sumi tonight, a senior, the Z receiver, is a guy that uh, Cupcath will probably try to get the ball to. And Donnie and Coach, uh, you, you guys know quarterbacks as well as any, anybody. A.J. Mayer, he is 6'3", guys. He is 190 pounds, but he's a sophomore. Okay, a starting for a good team like Cub Camp. You got a sophomore in there, so he's going to have some growing pains. And you look at their schedule. They played National Powerhouse Cincinnati St. X. They lost to Ryan by a touchdown, and they lost to Sycamore, one of the top teams in Ohio. So their, their early season schedule, now Lex Cath here tonight, has been brutal. 
Well, their head coach is a, is a tr has been a tremendous quarterback in his own right. He's won won several national championships at Georgetown, and and uh, and I had a f I was fortunate to, to coach him uh, with the Horsemen for a couple of years. And he's a, he's a really really big time competitor. And if he believes in he believes that AJ can do it, then AJ can do it. And then you got we mentioned Brumball uh, for Lexington Catholic, and uh, you look at the offensive line, Coach Amian. I think that's where we always talk as a captain. You get a good look there at Andy Thompson, Hickey. Uh, who else is out there? You got Jay. Jalen Jones, and the, uh, one of the other captains is uh, Rowaday. Uh, uh, Coach, you know, the offensive line, that's where games are won at any level. I don't care if it's Pee Wee, Pop Warner, high school, college, pro. How do you see the offensive line uh, as we take a look at Lexington Catholic? We've seen them a couple times this year. Yeah, they're big, they're strong, they're really quick, and I really like the way they pass protect. I think a lot of times we're going to see, I think we're going to see Brumball kind of lead the pocket periodically, try to get, he, he does a really good job going to his right and throwing with his left hand, which is really impressive. We talked about that before. He gets his hips around, he gets his shoulders around, he can deliver a nice pass as long as he doesn't throw back across the middle, which gets quarterbacks all in time. Of course, Alexi Catholic has won state football championships. Cuffcath, I remember back in the Lynn Ray days in the 80s and 90s, won it back-to-back -back in the 80s, won it back-to-back -back 93. 94. Lynn Ray, the reason I know Lynn Ray, he's a Boone County uh, quarterback in the 60s and then went on to coach and have a great career at a Cove Calf. He coached at Bryan Station for a while. He, he sure did. Assistant coach That's at right. Station. So uh, the captains are meeting, and uh, it is a, a good steady rain, guys. And how does that affect this game tonight as far as who you have in the game, uh, who you have uh, running the ball? Maybe you pass your pass schemes a little bit different when you got a wet football. Well, the first thing you have to do is deflate the football a little bit. <laughs> And when you do that, I knew we were going there. I did not know we were going there so early, though. And if you do that, it's easier to hold on it's to the ball. Right. Right. So, but no, I think the rain is it's, it's fun for the linemen. Yeah. They like getting out in it. Quarterbacks get frustrated. Keep the ball dry on the sideline. Right. You're all right. And Tom Brady played last night. He is watching tonight. So I heard, no, right. I'm just kidding with the coach. I think they'll ease into it. Um, you know, I expect to see a ground game early and try to ease these quarterbacks into it. Make sure they get a good feel. And make sure they kind of get a feel for each other. And then you know, you, I think with both these both these quarter or both these coordinators, both these head coaches, I think you'll see them open it up. And Eddie, if you're wondering, Eddie Everson, he does call the plays, offensive plays for Cub Cam. And uh, Lex Gath, of course, uh, Mike Engler left them a few years ago. He's up at Ryle now, right. so that's kind of a twist there. And uh, you got a little different thing going on schematically. Yeah, now you mentioned, you know, the powerhouses north of the river in Ohio. But honestly, we don't know much about them. We do know Ryle's a good football team. Yes, yes. And that was, that was one heck of a game there. What Ryle was impressive was what we already talked about. Their offensive line blocked, and they had a uh, like a stable of running backs. They had three or four kids that could just pound the football in there. Ryle did, and, and here comes uh, the Lexington Catholic Knights. They're in their dark uniforms tonight with the blue. As you can see, Cuff Cath in the white with the blue. We're just about set tonight. We're simulcasting on Night Vision and produced by Prepsman William Warfield in the house uh, with Coach Mike Meehan, Donnie Walker, I'm Gary Ball, and we'll, we're just about set for football. And guys, it is a steady rain, but as long as we don't get the lightning and the thunder, we're okay to play football. Play on. Yeah, it's an it's a, a artificial turf. It's a good field and two good football teams looking forward to it. Yeah, but the records are deceiving. I, I agree with you 100%, Coach Meehan. These two teams are much better than their records in I think Cub Canth will be a big factor in the playoffs when it starts because one thing you have to remember, Fort Thomas Highlands is a little down this year. They may not be a little down. They may be a lot down. So that opens the door for Eddie Everston and Cub Canth in that 5A. Right, and that's always a huge rivalry anyway. So you, you can kind of throw those records out the door anyway. Dropping back deep to receive the kick, Andy Thompson, and also back there, J.J. Ogbugu, set to kick off be Matt Kloska, the kicker for Cub Calf. Cub Calf out of Park Hills will set the offense. Jacob Ballard, Thomas uh, Gerhardstein, and Noah Tabriti are the uh, guards. Mark Wetcher, uh, Woodford Lankford are the tackles. This is for Lex Calf. You got uh, Donovan Morris, Andy Thompson, along with Chris Thompson, the wide receivers. Jalen Jones, a running back, legend uh, Brumball will be your quarterback for the Knights. A defense for the uh, Colonels, it'll be Jake Steins and Cam Butler at the defensive end. Josh Galvin, Luke Shields are your defensive tackles for Cub Cath. Marshall Hornsby, Ethan Sammons, Alex Shelton, the linebackers. Anthony Best, we're just about set for football. We'll complete that defense for you after this kick here coming by Covington Catholic's uh, Matt Kloska. He is a junior. He is, has, has a teed up on the near hash. We're just about set for football here tonight with uh, Agbugu and also uh, Thompson back deep at the 10-yard line. We'll break in the uh, rain here, but 
Set to kick off is Covington Catholic. Kloska's into it. He's a left-footed kicker. Low kick, and it'll drive over the back and go out of the back of the end zone as Agbugu couldn't handle that one. That's probably an early indication of what this uh, weather and that wet football does to you with uh, Agbugu not able to haul that one in, guys. That ball was kicked hard, though. I tell you what, hard and low. It would have been a really good one to return, but it was hard to handle. And I watched him warm up uh, pregame. He's got a good, strong leg. I, 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 can, I think he can put that in the end zone every time if he wants. Steady rain, and Brumball will go out of the shot. Gun and he will uh, give to Jones and Jones up near the 30. Jones to the 31. Jalen up to the 40. And there he is running like the old JJ. Uh, Coach Meehan talking about Jalen Jones. I was kind of on him a little bit in the uh, pregame, but I tell you what, the young man with a big time run there. He took that for 22 yards. Good burst and a good, a nice cut to the sideline. Good great read on the zone. Nice cut. Brum ball with twins both sides looking to the near side in some trouble. Brum ball. Rolls to the right, lefty fires, and it is caught over there, down to the 35 and down to the 32-yard line. Bennington with the catch over there. Kind of a surprise start tonight, Bennington, at that Z receiver. He had a nice route, and what happened was when when uh, run ball was scrambling, he kind of waved on Bennington down the field to get over. He's made two heady plays so far. He got downfield and blocked on the first run play. Brumball fakes it now, tucks it, and Brumball down to the 25. He's at the 15 and tripped up at the 10-yard line. Finally uh, tripped up on the uh, far side. Looked like a Best tripped him up. Best did a nice job on, on just saving the, the touchdown. But there was an excellent block out on the outside by the Z receiver. 25 yards. And he's returning from a concussion, I believe, Bo Bennington. Thompson and Bennington are to the close side. You got Morris and Akbugu to the open side. Brumball with Jones uh, behind him. Gives to Jalen. Jalen down low to the five, and he's going to be knocked down. Alex Shelton, the Mike linebacker. Shelton, 220 junior Shelton with the stop there. Penalty marker down, a little hanky down. Some some laundry on the field, as they say. Yeah, I saw some movement on the offensive line for, uh, for Catholic, if that's what they call just before the snap. They're in a rush offense. They're in a hurry-up offense. They're getting up there really quickly. And sometimes, especially early in the game, you get these guys get a little bit too mo uh, too movement. Coach, let's go fast. back and dissect this drive. It started with a great 22-yard run by Jalen Jones to the 42. Then, as you said, Brumball improvising and finding his receiver deeper downfield. But then they get the penalty there to kind of stall it a little bit. It, it is, but they're in a, still in a good situation. Quick pass to the uh, near side, called by Morris. He's to the 15, and Donovan trying to sidestep, and they say he stepped out at the 15-yard line. Morris with the catch, the senior. You know, that's the thing about Donovan and Agbugu and Thompson is uh, they're so quick out there, guys. They really run good routes, and those two guys, there you see a good look at uh, Donovan Morris, the uh, senior, and he also, guys, is an outstanding basketball player for Brandon Salzman. You see a lot of teams, uh, Donnie, throwing mm -hmm. that little flare stuff and throwing like they look like screens, but they're really not because the linemen aren't getting downfield. Well, that's because the, the the reason that play was so effective is they've run the zone and they've run the zone at three or four times already this drive, and so they what they're doing is they're letting the offensive linemen go ahead and block the zone, and then they just tag a little they tag a little bubble screen away from it, and so if uh, if the quarterback sees leverage or sees numbers out there, then he can go ahead and pull that and throw it, which is what that was. It was probably a run pass option. Second and 15, Brum ball is not in. And not in there now, and it's nearly picked off, but caught by, and it's going to be a touchdown. Jalen Jones came out of nowhere and caught the ball, and Looks like Brumball is getting worked on on the sideline. Yeah, he didn't look right after he got tackled when he pulled it on the zone. He did. Now, going back to what you said, I, uh, my, I have a good friend, uh, Curtis Cotton, the coach mm -hmm. down in Bowling right. Green, and they do a lot of that repo stuff, that run right. pass option stuff. Right. You, have, you actually have a, a run play and a pass play. Call. It was a Fago, the backup, right. who actually threw that pass and did a nice job in yep. there for Brumball, who's injured. So. Go doing a good job, and how about Jalen Jones coming out of there and making sure that the defensive back's not going to get the football? That was a little magic by Jalen. That's some encroachment. That was a great little slow screen set up by, you know, using tempo I think helped set that slow screen up as well. Well, they're going to go for two here. So Kirk Fago came in there and threw the touchdown pass to Jones of 15 yards. We'll get, keep an eye on Mr. Uh, Legend Brumball, see what his uh, health situation is. Oh! And they pick it up, and they're going to run it in. It looks like 
for the uh, two-point. There's a penalty marker down as Fago was able to run it in, guys, but there's a penalty marker down. Conversion attempt was a keeper by Fago. 11-03. Boy, that didn't take long for Lexcat to score. 80 yards on that drive. 80 yards. Capped off by the uh, touchdown pass from Kirk Fago to Jalen Jones at 15 yards. Well, now they come back and they're going to kick it. A little cat and mouse going on here. But a great offensive start for the uh, Knights. You see the new helmets on the Lexcath Knights tonight, guys. Got the new logo on the helmet. Yeah, pretty flashy. That drive took only one minute, less than a minute. 11.03 still to go. You're still working on it. Uh-oh, a bad snap. It'll be picked up, and the, the uh, kick will be no good. So... Kick is no good, 11.03 to go here, but Lexington Catholic strikes early as they go 80 yards on the drive, capped off from Fago, the backup quarterback, as he uh, gets it to Jalen Jones for a 15-yard score. We'll return in uh, tonight. We also want to thank UK Sports Medicine and also uh, Roberts Insurance, Bob Roberts Insurance in Richmond. We'll return here to Joseph K. Ford Stadium with the Knights leading 6 to nothing. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's ball game. Lexington Catholic hopes to pave the way for the future of high school sports broadcasting through this exciting new digital network. If you would like to get your business into the game as a night vision sponsor, please contact Delane Thiel at 277-7183, extension 253. So Moore's uh, set to kick off for the uh, Knights and back deep best. And also uh, McGinnis is to the far side. And here's the uh, Moore's kick. It's going to be a short kick. And that's going to be McGinnis at the 20, 25. He's up to the 30 and 33-yard line. Good return there by Ryan McGinnis, the senior. He'll play wing back tonight. A.J. Mayer is your sophomore quarterback. Uh, the uh, center for Cupcath uh, defensively is Lee uh, Ludafisi. Jack, uh, Luke Shields, Michael Schulte are the guards. Chris Rieziger, Hunter Ziegelmeyer the tackles. And then you got in the backfield, you've got uh, Grant Dyer, Ryan McGinnis, uh, Ben France, Tyler McClure is a wide receiver, Sumi. And let's see what the uh, quarterback here, Mayer, does. Mayer to 33. It's going to give off the right side. McGinnis, and he's to the 34. Knocked down on a good play uh, defensively. And coming over there, getting him. On the uh, stop was Andy Hickey. Knights defense, uh, Zach Middleton, Will Roden are your defensive ends. Drew Boudelier, nose tackle. Eli Mitchell, Austin Perdoche, Zach Newcomb, Eric Foster, the linebackers. Andy Hickey made that last play along with Davis Rowday, uh, Jack uh, Fago, and Austin Lauderbeck. That's your defense for the Knights. No gain on that play, second and 10. 10-24, motion to the far well, they give it to the motion man going around the uh, left side and he takes it up to the 40 uh, yard line motion man that was henry uh, toby there the ball carrier that's a pretty good job of running that play now lexington catholic got hurt the last game we did by that outside stuff too those jet sweeps and stuff got outside so. hey we're going to really watch this uh, eli mitchell tonight uh, the coaches are really high on him as a linebacker so we're going to keep a close eye on him and see how he does so third down and four at the 40. And quarterback is going to keep it. Mayer, and he's got the first down up to the 45. Mayer with a good effort there, I think. And we said in the defense is Davis Rawadi. Is that right, Rawadi? So Rawadi is back there for the uh, Knights on the defense. But nice job there by the quarterback. He just wouldn't be denied, uh, guys. He knew where he had to go to get that uh, first down marker. He gets it up to the 45-yard line to keep this drive going for the Cubcath Colonels. Followed that big uh, big, uh, big guard, number 63, Lovicki. Yeah, the offensive lines look good so far. Motion to the near side. Mayer is going to give it to the motion guy. And... That's going to be all the way up. That's Ryan McGinnis up near midfield. He gets into Alexa Cat territory to the 49. Nice six-yard pickup. Mitchell made the uh, stop there, the outside linebacker. We're, we're, what, what we're seeing now, we're, we're seeing from both teams the, the receivers blocking downfield. Right. Donnie made a mention of that for Catholic. And number nine, Ben France did a heck of a job downfield occupying that defensive back so he can get that extra yardage. I like how these offensive linemen move laterally as well. 
Motion down to the uh, far side by France. And here's the uh, handoff and a first down as they give it to Grant Dyer, the sophomore. First carry for Dyer, and he gets the first down to the 43. Hickey making the hit there for the uh, Knights defense. First down, though. So both teams on their opening drive. Lex Calf moved at 80 yards, capped off the touchdown from Fago to Jones, and now uh, Cuff Calf moving the ball effectively. Both teams have that same type of offense where they like to hit yep. the corners hard. Uh, Lexington Catholic, well, at least with, with their starting quarterback, relies on the zone. Um, but w what we're seeing here is a lot of jet sweep and a lot of moving outside. France moves and sets to the right by Mayer. Right. High snap. Mayer gives it back inside. Good running room there down to the 38-yard line by Dyer. Grant Dyer, the 6'1", 190-pound sophomore running back. And, Dyer runs hard. And it looked like the old GT there, didn't it, Coach? Yeah, it did. They pulled the backside guard and tackle. When they do that, yeah. when, when they pull, the defensive lineman on that side has to has to close down real hard to make the tackle. And actually, he got a hand on him. He just didn't close down far enough. Austin Pedroge made the hit there, the linebacker for uh, Lexington Catholic. He makes a lot of tackles. Second down and five for the Colonels. A lot of movement by Cove Cath. They're going left to right, trailing 6 to nothing, 7.45 here in the first period. Now they'll uh, set up McGinnis to the left side, and they'll hand it to McGinnis, and he's hit immediately and dropped. Very little gain there. Nice play uh, coming up was Austin Lauterbach. And Coach, my guess is that what Coach Ev Eviston has seen is that if he'll give them a, a one-back look, that he'll get a better box to run in than if he motions back in, motions a back back into the backfield, he can ke he keep that same look to run into. Third That's down right. and five, Coach. There have to be some adjustments made if they keep doing that, but that was a pretty good stop right there. Yes. This time, uh, Brent Angel splits way out to the left. You've got twin receivers both sides. Quarterback uh, Mayer is going to tuck it. He's at the 35. He's got the first down. Mayer down inside the 30. Runs out of bounds inside the 30-yard line as he's uh, rustled out over there and hustling over there, Eli Mitchell. First down, and you'll, well, you got to like the legs of A.J. Mayer, guys, and what he's able to do improvising. I don't know if that was a broken play. It might have been a design quarterback keeper. I think it was designed, and I thought it was timely to put him under center as the rain starts to fall a bit harder as well. It was, and uh, a good job of offensive lineman blocking down the line of scrimmage and sealing inside. Nice. Sumi is out to the right. They give him to McGinnis. McGinnis to 25, and he's rustled down at the 24-yard line. And McGinnis, the ball carrier. It was Andy Hickey, the uh, senior corner there, making the stop. There is a flag down with 6.54 to go. And, guys, your early impressions here, the good drive by Lex Kath, topped off by the Jalen Jones TD. And now Cub Kath moving the ball. Eddie Eviston calling the plays over there. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what Donnie said. I think the offensive line has really been the difference right here. And Eviston's ideas as far as moving the formations around. That time, if you notice, he was pretty wide left, Donnie, but he was pretty tight right. So he's looking for something else over here. Well, he's, he's able to keep a six-man box with two backs in the backfield and five offensive linemen. So essentially, you've got six for six is what he's looking for. Plus, you've got a running back. We're on Night Vision tonight, produced by Preps Ben Gary Ball with Coach Mike Meehan and uh, Donnie Walker and William Warfield producing. Mayer out of the shotgun after the penalty, and he's going to give it to the uh, France. France to the 35, and France down. Boy, he got the, most of that penalty yardage back. Good running there by Ben France. He's a junior, the wing back, and, uh, boy, good running there. You know, when you get that old jet sweep and the guy's in motion, he's got a head of steam going up, and that's really been effective for Lex, for the uh, Cub Calf Colonels in this drive. Well, and, and they've been able to seal that edge, even though that even though Lexington Catholic has got an outside linebacker that's playing tight to the box out there. It, uh, they're able to seal that edge and get around it. Second and 13 for Mayer. McGinnis motion. He gives now back inside, and that's Dyer. And Dyer gets down to the original line of scrimmage. Now it's going to bring up third down at about 10 for Cove Calf, Covington Catholic, Park Hills, Kentucky. Co Coach Chuck. Uh, Coach Perry and his staff, they've adjusted a little bit defensively. They stacked a the linebacker that time, and it almost looks like he's a spy. I don't know whether he's spying on the quarterback or the running back. I guess it's when they're in the under the center. It's with the running back. I would expect some play action here, maybe. Mayor, play action. He's going to tuck it, and he has hit and dropped on a good play. Coming up, making a nice play is one of the backup, Eli Mitchell. We, uh, we, were, we heard early. Gary, from other people about how good this Eli Mitchell is and how hard he's been working. The coaching staff's really impressed. 
He is really, really doing a good job of scraping out there. I tell you who else helped out on that guy. Sid Sharp, number 54, did a great job. Brings up fourth and seven. Triple receivers to the left for A.J. Mayer, the big 6'3 quarterback. He rolls uh, to the left. He's a southpaw. Now he sets and throws the right hand, and it's going to be incomplete. As he's setting through that, my goodness. I got, you have to keep an eye on, uh, if you look at the offensive tackles, Hunter Ziegelmeyer, the offensive right. tackle, when they're going to throw or when they're going the other way, he backs up a step. If I was a coach and I could see that, I would read that right away. He had thrown enough to know for us, but that was a pretty good set there by, right. by the quarterback. Yeah. They had great coverage. They, they weren't fooled, and they overloaded that side, which kind of gave that away a little bit as well. Kirk Fago gives now to Jalen Jones. He fights and battles for a couple of yards. Don't, don't you feel like the, that was a zone look where he just went ahead and give him the ball anyway? Probably the coach just said, just give him the ball, get used to being out there. Well, and, and, and sometimes what they do, especially on the run pass stuff, if they are giving him that option, is they will lock that backside defensive end and won't read him. I don't know if that's what they did that time, but a lot of times they will. Thompson in their quarterback now, and Thompson up to the uh, 30, up to the 31-yard line. Andy Thompson, third quarterback Coach Perry's used tonight. He started with the legend Brumball. He got some type of injury, came in with Kirk Fago through the touchdown, and now you got Andy Thompson in there. Andy Thompson's a good athlete. We've watched him before. you got an athlete back there, quarterback. That helps too. Well, and, and the offensive coordinator, Jesse Cantrell, told me pregame that uh, if they did get a lot of rain, that they probably would do some Wildcat stuff with Andy. And Andy's in there at the uh, Wildcat, third down and four at the 30-yard uh, line, and Thompson fakes. Now in trouble, Thompson up to the 31 and slam back there at the 31-yard line. Coming in there to get him is a couple of big guys. Big number 74, Luke Shields, the senior there, making the hit. And that will force a fourth down, guys. And the second possession, not as successful as that first series when he went 80 yards for the score. Well, it's, it's really raining pretty hard out there, and I think they're going to have to – Andy's just getting a feel for the game now probably. Well, and you've lost your starting quarterback, which was the catalyst. Oh, no. Snap goes uh, behind the uh, kicker, goes all the way to the end zone. He's just going to jump on it, and it'll be a safety. That ball was shot out of a cannon. It was 10 feet over the head of the punter. Well, and, and as you recall, on the extra point attempt, we had a, we had a miscue on the snap as well. So that's uh, special teams, which are normally what, what Lakeston Catholic lives and die, you know lives by. They're, they're usually very, 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 very fundamental there. But, you know, that's a live football. Heads up play right. by Zach Middleton, the punter, to know, hey, i got to go back here and get on this ball, or they're going to get a touch. And even though it's two points, you don't give them six right. to tie the game. Yeah, and I'll tell you what else I liked about that. And, and I've coached this so many times. Some guys try to pick up the ball. Well, you can't do that. You're right, always in right. trouble. But even worse, some of these kickers try to kick the ball out of the back <laughs> yeah. of the end zone. Carol, your premium. And invariably, they miss it. Yeah. Invariably. Remember they Carol, your premium? Yes. That's one of the most uh, famous uh, non kicks in the NFL. Well, to go back to your point about that last drive, you know, you lost your starting quarterback who was who was huge in the first drive. He made a lot of, you know, he made good reads in the zone game, and he, you know, and he was blocking downfield. He made two good throws on that first drive. So uh, you lose him, and, and and obviously you've lost you've lost some con you know you've lost some continuity for sure. Where is Legend? Is he still the, on the, the? He's in the locker. Room. He's in the locker room being attended to. But so, you, but you know what? You're right. And the quarterback's gone. They bring the receiver that was doing such a good job of blocking back to quarterback. You're losing right. the blocker out there. Too. And they've been hurt by the injury bug, uh, is what they were telling me pregame. Here's the kick, and this time it'll be best. He's at the 35. A best 40 turns on the Jets. He's at midfield, and finally upended at the 45 yard line is Jack Fago making the uh, stop there. But that's a nice return there by Best. Coverage is hard on those safety kicks, I tell you. Those, those guys get the ball. They're hungry. They know they're going to get really good field position, so they can run hard, and uh, it'll, it usually really hurts you. This is going to be an interesting series for, for the Knights to see if they can adjust and stop some of that outside stuff. Dyer is your uh, lone back this time under center as mayor. He sends McGinnis in motion. He's going to toss it to him, but the uh, penalty flag will blow that play dead before the uh, play transpires, and they were going to do the old sweep toss again to Ryan McGinnis, the senior running back, and that's been uh, Eddie's favorite play tonight, guys, is that old uh, sweep toss over there. He's done it to both sides of the field. 
Well, it looks to me, uh, Coach, that they're packing their box. They're packing the box in defensively. They basically are putting eight guys up near the line of scrimmage um, in, inside. And so Eddie's doing what he can to try to get outside, which is typically what you can't, you know, it's hard to do on a rainy night. But on turf, you got a little bit of an advantage. Right. Now, watch those linebackers, though. They're, they're starting to sprint to the outside now. Quick pass left side, caught screen to the 40, down to the 30, and he is off to the races, down to the 10, and finally tripped up at the five yard line. That's just good blocking out there. Brent, that was very fundamental. Great Brent, leverage. Brent Angel, 16 there, making a catch. And, Coach, you called him out uh, on the early series that Absolutely. you thought they'd go to him. Absolutely. Yeah, um, again, that blocking is very in, in, impressive. When you can lock up on those defensive backs and get their heads where they're trying to look over your shoulder to find the runner, you know, you've got an advantage. McGinnis and Dyer in the backfield. For the quarterback, Mayer, double tights. Mayer fumbles the exchange, and he is going to pay for it and be pulled down immediately. A uh, couple of guys on top of him there, and in particular, Austin Lauder back there was uh, in on the play, but the exchange from the center to the uh, quarterback was fumbled, and that's going to cost him about a half a yard. And I think that big play was set up by the uh, the last, when they lined up in that same formation with trips to the left and the, li and the running back on the left side, they rolled out. And it looked to me like the secondary went ahead and took off and got deep expecting to roll out at the throw deep. And they, there was a smart play to throw it underneath and let him go. Six to two, but uh, Cubcan threatening to take the lead here late in the first period against Lexcath. Handoff inside Dyer, and he's hitting, stopped uh, about the three-yard line. Again, louder back in there. And also in there for the – and Sid Sharp, I tell you, Sharp, number 54, has played – made a couple of nice plays defensively tonight for that you, defense. You people watching this on Prep Spin on, on, on Lexington Catholic Network, this, they're running what we call a dark – I call a dark formation that time. There was no tight end. They're overloaded one side and trying to take advantage of a Lexington Catholic shift. Quarterback looking to pass, and it's knocked away. Tender receiver was Angel again, but knocked away there, and that brings up fourth and goal. Good defensive play. That's dangerous to the short side of the field right there. Yeah, that's where the crowd is over there. Right. I do think a, I think a play action pass, maybe a, a, a little bootleg or waggle action can really hurt him because right. playing in a steady rain really from the, uh, the kick, guys. Right. Fourth down and goal. Let's see what uh, Eddie Eviston has here with quarterback A.J. Mayer. Motion by McGinnis. Dyer's alone back in high snap. Quarterback gets it, rolls to the right. Quarterback, and he's going to be stopped at the three. He got stood up. Hickey made the play. Let's see, there is a flag down, so could be a hold, and uh, Lex Camp would decline that hold and take over on down. Nice job. Really good defensive stand that time. And I, you know, I don't know if it's the rain or not, but that's, uh, that's another snap that went, went a little bit awry that, may, that, that, did, that, to me, definitely played a part in that play breaking down. If you're just tuning in, excuse me, Coach, uh, Legend Brumball injured some type of shoulder, we think. We're just speculating. Right. He's in the locker room. Fago came in through the touchdown pass and, right. and to Jones, and then Andy Thompson came in on the last series. So, uh, for the uh, – here's a quick pass this time to the near side. Caught at the uh, 10 up to the 13-yard uh, line. For go, and that goes complete to Ogbugu. Watch the, watch the defensive coverage here because Lexington Catholic loves to see this when the safety is crowding the hash. They love to hit the middle or run the, fl uh, the uh, seam down, down the uh, outside there. Fago now in trouble, oh, rolling that. to the right. He's in the end zone. Got to be careful there. Gets out of there, and then he has his legs cut out from under him at the uh, six-yard line on the far side of the well, field. That's experience there. You had a second and short. You just need to go ahead and throw that ball away and get a third and short manageable down. Well, I tell you, how about big Jake Stein's guys, number 90, uh, 6'1", 220, tracking down Fago there, the big Quick. defensive end. Third down and seven. This, I just don't know if a go has the arm to throw the pass that they need right here. They could bring a man across. Jones Schiss, Fago back to pass, looking oh, for the screen. Yeah. Sets it up, Akbugu. Akbugu to the uh, seven, and he's going to be pulled down right there. Very little gain. It'll be fourth down. Trying to strip the ball out of there was Covington uh, Catholic. 
and, and, and Cove Cath may think the same thing, Coach, because they play very aggressive defense right there. When you know that you've got you, know, you got a long third and uh, you got a third and long situation, they played very aggressively and were able to come up and take care of that screen right away. Absolutely. And one of the things I learned from you actually <laughs> about throwing that screen is the quarterback controls that with his eyes. Mm -hmm. And that, that time, an inexperienced, inexperienced quarterback, he looked too soon to the receiver. You got to look downfield. You got to look away. You got to get those people moving a step or two in the wrong direction before you throw the screen. Middleton back to punt. He hopes he has better results than last time, guys. Hey, this could end up in the baseball field. Right. Middleton uh, at the back of the – he'll punt to McGinnis, who stands uh, at about the 40-yard line. This time a good snap, and the punt is off. McGinnis nice. uh, watches it bounce, 45, takes a good roll mm. back inside the 45 to the 40-yard uh, line. Boy, that's a nice uh, punt there out of trouble by Middleton. Great job there by Middleton, guys. Uh, yep. Catching the catching the punt is a big deal. That's a huge, huge uh, bounce in, in favor of Lexington Catholic right there. What have I always said about that? <laughs> Catch the punt right. because every 10 yards it rolls is a first down right. that you didn't get. I rolled about 20. Yeah. So instead of having the ball at about the in, – in uh, Lexicon territory, they start back at their own 41. Just 6.6 .6 seconds to go, 6-2. to two. A Lexington Catholic on top on a touchdown uh, pass as it went from Fago to Jalen Jones, the backup quarterback. Mayer gives now right side Dyer, and Dyer dives up uh, to the 45-yard line. Picks up about four, maybe five yards. Eli Mitchell making the hit there for the Knights' defense. That's going to do it for the first period. And the first quarter comes to a close with Lexington Catholic leading 6-2 to two here over Covington Catholic. We'll be back here on the Night Vision and produced by Prep Spin 6-2. to two, Lexington Catholic leading Cupcat. What if you could do all your banking without ever having to run to your bank? What if you could do your banking from any stadium or city in the country? It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. With traditional banks, online and mobile banking, it couldn't be more simple. My life moves pretty fast, and traditional banks' team protects me while I do what I do best, at home or away. Way to go, traditional bank. You scored again. Traditional banks, online and mobile banking. Winners at home and on the road. Traditional bank. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's ball game. Lexington Catholic hopes to pave the way for the future of high school sports broadcasting through this exciting new digital network. If you would like to get your business into the game as a night vision sponsor, please contact Delane Thiel at 277-7183, extension 253, or dthiel at lexingtoncatholic.com. Little globes. <laughs> and we're back live here. We're watching the rain pour down here. Joseph K. Ford Stadium, Gary Ball with a Mike Meehan and Donnie Walker, William Moorefield producing here. Six to two as we start the second quarter, and the Colonels have the football second down at the 46-yard line. Motion now going in motion, and they uh, toss it there to uh, McGinnis. And McGinnis up to the, the uh, 48-yard line. Nice, nice job again on the toss outside. And these receivers and DBs are really getting after it downfield, like you pointed out earlier. Coach. Amazing. Um, I, I tell you, one of the best coaches I've ever seen in coaching that blocking was Paul Raines. When we were at, but he took, he himself took all the receivers that day after day worked on getting down there, locking up with those people, climbing them a little bit, keeping their eyes from the from the runner. Splitting way out to the uh, bottom, the open side of the field. One of the re, uh, receivers there is McClure. And here's a quarterback looking. Mayer spins out, throws it, and it's going to be intercepted. Probably ill-advised pass there for sure. Intercepted by the uh, Knights. And it's uh, picked off there by Davis. Rawadi picked it off. Rawadi with the interception there. And, boy, I tell you, definitely A.J. Mayer would like to have that one back. Yeah, I think that was a, a, an errant throw because he was under a lot of pressure. Somebody had a hold of him. The ball's wet. A lot of bad things can happen when that's like. Well, in the passing game really hasn't been the strength of Cuff Cath right now, which is why I think Eddie was doing a lot of movement to try to set up the box so he could run it. Kirk Vago, low snap. Vago is going to tuck it, and he's up to the 40, and finally he's going to get out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. 
it's deal like, over there running him out. Gary, it's nice to have a running quarterback. We saw St. X uh, do that to perfection, didn't yep. we? That kid, oh, my goodness. De uh, Ritter, I believe it was. Yeah, Ritter. He's turned out, you know, St. X is pretty good, aren't they, Coach? Yes, they are. Second down and quick pass left side caught, and it's going to be up to the uh, midfield stripe. And Bogbugu with the catch on the far side. Bogbugu. I tell you, to me, really, the difference in the game right now is tackling. Yeah, it is. It, actually, it is. And, uh, I, and and obviously, the blocking that goes along with it. Well, I think that, you know, like, like I think Lexington Catholic, their receivers have made some guys miss a little bit, miss a couple of tackles, but the, defensively, they've made a lot of tackles. Third down, and here comes the blitz. They give to Jones. Jalen, and he's battling for that first down, but good stop there. By You talk about tackling, Coach Walker, and that was some good tackling right there. And um, it was uh, Jake Stein's defensive end with his speed and his size uh, making a good tackle there. Uh, I think they got a really generous spot on that play, too. They'll take it. I agree. Fago fakes now, tucks it. Fago down to the 43, pickup of about five for Kirk Fago. Now that that is that's not a read, is it? That he just nah. followed the he just faked the ball and then followed him up through the hole. Yeah, that's a called quarterback run there. But I I tell you what's been impressive. Or, or both of these teams have done a really nice job on first down. Six to two is your score. Knights on top, and here's a, a quick pass out to Bennington, and he drops it there. Bo Bennington had it for a moment, dropped it. That's probably one of the few times tonight we've seen with his rain has played a factor. Well, yeah, played a factor in getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands yeah. right there was what's really hurt that play. It's fun to watch how uh, both of these teams are doing what they can to beat the rain, to try to do the things that they feel like they can do best in a situation, especially with a backup quarterback. Third down, four for go, long count, trying to draw Cuff Kath offside, quarterback, out of the shotgun. Look, changed like he's changing the play. Yeah, blitz. Now they back off the blitz to scuff Kath a little bit. We go gives to Jalen Jones. Jones, and he cannot break the tackle in the backfield. That's that young man, Steins, we've been talking about. 220-pound defensive end. Man, when he gets in there, guys, it's Katie Barn at the door. He always seems to make the play. That was a nice job getting in the backfield, and, and he was if he had broke that tackle, he probably had a first down. I still, I'm still concerned about the, the the cast on his arm. You know how 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 good he feels about running. Middleton set the punt. Good punt by Middleton. Let's see where they marked that at. Mm, Boy, he went for the coffin corner, and I think he got it down there, guys, at about the eight-yard line. That's an excellent punt there by Middleton. Very nice. These are two good football teams, and they're, they're really beating. You know, it's like two boxers in there fighting. and The coaches are trying to outsmart each other, and the players are trying to do what they can do best. I, I just like def, def, defensively the way uh, – the way Lexington Catholic has, has adjusted. Right. They've only given up a, a set, two points of safety is all they've given up here in the first half, 9.20 to go. They lead it 6-2. to two. So we haven't even talked about it, but Covenant Catholic, their star running back, Ben Darlington, broke his leg in the first game against Ryle, had over 100 yards, and they were marching to win that game, and he broke his leg on a 50-yard run. And off, and here's some running room up to the 20 and to the 22-yard line. Oh, my that ball almost popped up. Oh, he did. Dyer made the nice run there. That was Grant Dyer, the sophomore. Now they adjusted their defense on that too, Coach. That was a nice call by Eddie Edison. It was, and I think they pulled the backside tackle on that to block too. It was, almost, it was like an old-fashioned trap play. Mm -hmm. Nine minutes, ten seconds to go in the first half, and Lexington Catholic leads Covcath 6-2. to two. Squeezing them in. Look at that wide out on the right no, side. No, it's not a baseball game. Six to two, guys. Here is Mayer. He spins, and he gives now to, to Dyer, and he leaps up to about the 25-yard line. Ball carry was Grant Dyer. They definitely see something now, don't they, because they're hitting, they're hitting that same area with those quick hitters. They're spreading them out on the far side, hitting that side real quick, trying to keep those defensive backs in there from making tackles. Eric Foster helped out on that play for the uh, Knights defense. Second down and six for him. He shifts now as he They're moves. Basically getting a five-and-a-half-man yep. box right there with that, that middle linebacker has backed off so uh, to about seven or eight yards, but now he's back up in there. Yeah, he's back up Triple there. receivers. Mayer looking to pass, and he's got his man up to the 32-yard line. Angel, Brent Angel. That Very a, close to the first down marker. That was a nice throw. That was a real nice throw. 
you know, we, we talk about, uh, Donnie, often as you work with quarterbacks, and Gary's heard me say it so many times, two things are really important are quick reads and quick releases. Exactly. You know, you, the read is you have to read the – high school football is different now. Right. I mean, you've got to read these, these defenders and read the defense, yeah. and you have to get the ball out of your hands quickly. Third down and short for the Colonels' offense, Mayer. Slides right against to Dyer, and he's got the first down to the 33-yard line by about a yard or so. And Lexington Catholic Dyer called the perfect defense for that play. They they blitzed right into that A-gap. Newcomb helped out on the uh, stop, the uh, linebacker, and Pedroci as well. Pedroci makes a lot of plays, but, uh, Coach, you were talking about tackling. I think the difference, he kind of heard you out there. Stein's a defensive end, since he heard you say that, has made three or four yeah. really nice tackles. It's been a big plus for Cuffcast defense. First down for the offense now. In motion goes McGinnis. They give to Dyer back inside, yeah. and Dyer to the uh, 35, where he pick up a couple of yards. This uh, offensive line for Catholic is very aggressive. And Lexington Catholic, the Knights are trying to match that aggressiveness, which could get him in trouble a little bit later on. But right now, they're really, really reacting quickly to the ball, on the backside especially. I think they're selling out to the fact that, that Cupcat is struggling with the passing game. They've got eight guys in the box every single play right now. Yeah, but I'd look for some misdirection that hurt him. That's what I think. Mayor under center this time. France in motion to give to Dyer. Dyer with some room, and Dyer up to the 42-yard line, slammed down there by one of the uh, defensive uh, backs. That was Foster. And so far, that's where they've had their most success is in the A-gaps. Yes, they have. Uh, and, and Dyer's running hard. Oh, yeah. He, really he runs really well with his pad level. I, I, I've been impressed with the way he gets his shoulders down. It's all about leverage. 6.55 first half, and... It's going to be third down and two for the Colonels of Covington Catholic against Lexington Catholic. Knights leading 6-2. to two. Gary Ball, Mike Meehan, Donnie Walker, William Warfield. Here's the mayor. Quick pass, and it's caught up to the – and they say, no, he dropped it. He had it, then he dropped it. They say incomplete. That was pretty good timing by, by Lexington Catholic's number 37 there coming up there to, to – uh, Confront him just France. as the ball got there. France, France should catch it. He needs to catch that ball, Coach. Yes, he does. And, that, and the Cubcats struggles continue on third down. Even in a manageable third down, they, they're still struggling right now. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the belief that to dance with what brought you, and you're, you know, you're, you're able to run the ball effectively right now, especially in the A-gaps. And when they're expecting you to throw the ball, go ahead and stick with it. Here's the punt by Koska. Thompson bobbles it. And picks it up, comes to the near side, now reverses it, now comes back this way. Here comes Andy Thompson, and up to the uh, near the 20-yard line. Yeah, little, little jitter, jitterbug is not going to work against a team that covers so well. That's a well-coached football team. I don't know if you noticed it, but they went down in their lanes. They stayed in their lanes. They closed down the way they were supposed to. Penalty marker down as well, but uh, Thompson doing his best. Uh, Barry Sanders there. And for you guys that don't remember Barry Sandals, Google him. He was pretty good. Pretty darn good. He was really good. Detroit Lions. And he here's the handoff miss. to Jones. Jalen up to about the 23-yard line. Pickup of about three. Second down. 6.18 to go. First half. Still 6-2. to two. We've got a baseball score going on here, guys. 6-2. to two. Who hit the grand slam, I want to know. Coach Meehan hit the grand slam. Uh, I always could hit. I just couldn't catch Pass and Whoa. incomplete. Oh, my. Trying to go to the receiver there, Coach? Thompson. Thompson, the intended receiver. He looked up He looked up and saw that safety in the middle of the field. And the safety looked – he stopped when he saw the receiver. Yeah. It looked like – it was a little – like a seam, right? Down the well, hash? It, it was. Uh, but he adjusted inside. Right. It looked like. Fago rolling to the left. Fago sets, throws. Nice throw, nice catch up at the 23-yard line. Agbugu with the catch. And I tell you what, guys, that was a well-thrown football in these conditions there by Kirk Fago. Yeah, let me tell you something I'm seeing now, too. Uh, the the uh, Covenant Catholic uh, Colonels are looking to the sideline to get defensive calls, and sometimes they're not ready. They're not prepared when the ball snaps. 
Give to Jones. Jalen running hard up to the 40. Pick up of about eight, maybe nine yards. Jones up to the 40. I like that. That's a good play. That was a nice hard run with, uh, with great pad level right there as well. Galvin helped out for the uh, Cubcat defense. Second down and about a yard. Nice hard running there by J.J. Second down and one. Coming in hard on the outside. Jones, and he's got the first down up to the 45-yard line. Pick up of about six. You know, tonight's game is brought to you by Collins Bowling Centers, Eastland and Southland Bowling Lanes, Lexington Family Business since 1959. Uh, get their $90, uh, over $90 of bowling, food, drinks for only $39.95. Collins Bowling Centers will your friend and family come out to enjoy the great uh, bowling at Collins Bowling Centers. All right, look, I, Donnie I, and, and Gary, I just don't think you can bounce around on this football team and get anywhere because they're so quick defensively, especially getting outside. And, and especially Steins and Butler, the defensive oh, ends, guys. Those two guys are very – talk about containment out there. And they've done a great job of trying to, of taking away the perimeter, and I, and I think you're seeing, you know, there's the difference in in the quarterback play right now too. Uh, he's not getting the ball out as quickly, uh, and with as much, you know, just with with, with as much velocity as it, either to to give those guys a chance to make some plays out in space. Well, with the timeout, that'll give me time to tell you about the uh, Scholastic Ball Report Saturday at noon. Coach Meehan, uh, the CW, our team of the week tomorrow, the Madison Central Indians and Mark Centers off to three and zero start. The uh, Louisville Courier Journal has. Ranked 14th in the state. They play Bryan Station tonight. Our scholar athletes, two 4.0 students from Dunbar Golf, uh, and also a feature on uh, Jalen Williams, one of the best running backs in the state down at Letcher County. And, of course, uh, Sarah Breidenball, the a new assistant commissioner tomorrow on the KHSA notes. All that coming up, plus highlights. That's not it. That's not all. Plus highlights from all these games around wow. the area. So all that tomorrow at noon on the uh, CW, the Scholastic Ball Report. You know, Coach Center uh, – He's a really, really good football coach. Yes. And, you know, he when he was young, uh, younger, I saw him at some clinics, and he really knew what he was talking about. Yeah. You know, we had some conversations. He was at Garrett County for six years, and now he's the head coach at Central, Madison Central. They're the team of the week tomorrow. For go fakes now. For go hit and knock backwards, not going anywhere. Ball stripped out of there. Let's see what the officials, they're going to mm. say that the uh, play was blown dead. And that's uh, who else? Big number 90, Jake Steins coming out of there with He's the ball. That was, that was a called quarterback counter right there. They pulled the guard and the tackle for that quarterback counter, and they filled that nicely and read it nicely, which uh, which, which, which was the same play that Covcath ran on their first drive that uh, Lexington Catholic did not crash down on hard enough. Right, right. Close down. Keep your shoulder square. Close down. Keep your outside arm free. Get down in there and make the tackle. If you're just tuning in, uh, Fago's in there because Legend Brumball injured in the first uh, after the first series when they scored. Here's the uh, throw, and that's going to be caught down to the 45-yard line on the far side. Nice catch by Agbugu. Well, Agbugu came back with that ball, but uh, that's a nice uh, throw there by Fago. It was a little wobbly, but it was, uh, it was it a, got there. a really good route, to tell you the truth. He came back hard to the ball. On the run to his left, to the wide side of the field, I'll, I'll take it. Here's Jones trying to dance it outside. Jones has got some room, 40, and oh. he trips up as the turf monster got him at the 36. <laughs> that may have been the wet field, too, but I'll tell you, he had it. He was gone for the for the, for the the house that Making time. the cut there, wasn't he, Coach? Yeah. Have you noticed who's been out on the, on the two big runs that Lexington Catholic has had? Have you noticed who's been out in front with those guys? It's been the quarterbacks. On the first big run, uh, it may have been the first play. Legend was out in front, and on that one, Kirk was out in front. A go. You have in there now Brett Balserak. He's got the ball, and he's hit. Nice. Help ended at the 38-yard line. Balserak, the ball carrier. First time we've seen Brett in there tonight, spelling Jalen Jones. Yeah, they. I think Jalen just got a little tired or when he when he uh, made that run. Trey Carney, this guy, this kid is really, really a uh, linebacker, really aggressive, really getting to the ball well. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm, no, it's, what's his name? The guy at 33 for Shelton. Shelton. The linebacker. We yeah. love this kid. Yeah. And picked up by the quarterback and running back gets it. Ball Serac and. He takes it off the right side. That, boy, that was an ugly play from the word go. Well, but that wasn't that a shortstop? 
yeah. yeah. He just scooped it off. Yeah, scooped it I up. thought he was going to throw to first. I thought he was going to throw out there. To well, we got a baseball score, 6-2 to two yeah. here with 255 to go in the first half. Don't they call that a fortuitous bounce right yes. there? Yes, yes, that's a good word. I don't want to ask you to spell that, though. <laughs> don't uh, – <laughs> if I was in the spelling bee, I, I would do yes. it. But now no. that you've put the pressure on me, I'm right. not even going to try. Third down and long now for Fago, and he's going to give it to Thompson. Now he's going to oh. throw, and he's going to have to reverse it, though, to look. Thompson coming to the near side, gets a block. He's asking for another block, gets it, and upended close to the first down marker. Let's see where they mark it at, just short. Uh, the uh, first down, one player was just obliterated back at the 45. That was a big-time block. That was awesome. And that kid's about twice Donnie Morris's size right there. Well, Thompson, he wanted to throw it, guys. Obviously, it was a design toss and throw, but, uh, boy, he improvised like nobody can do better than Andy Thompson. Fourth and short. The cuff defense are really nice. Fago gives to Jalen Jones, and he is going to dive down for close to the first down marker. Yeah, I think he's got it, but yeah, it, it was not by much. Woo. There's a lot of collisions going on inside. Been a heavy rain ever since the kick here at Joseph K. Ford Stadium, campus of Lexington Catholic. Both teams have played uh, really good defense, guys. I'm going to go ahead. Very fundamental. First down. Fago gives to Jones, Jones to the 20, Jones a 15, 10, he's gone. Jalen Jones takes it to the house. You know, that's a senior right there saying, hey, my quarterback is injured, legend Brumball. I got to pick it up here. Jalen Jones really picking up his game here tonight. That's a nice touchdown run there by J.J. We got a player shaking up for Cuff Cav. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to say it again. I think that one of the advantages of that play that made that play work was I don't think Covington Catholic was ready for the snap. They absolutely were still standing around looking at the sideline. This is the Jalen Jones we saw last year rush for 1,600 yards and 25 touchdowns. He hasn't had a breakout game yet this year. Of course, he broke the hand early in the scrimmage, and he's got the big cast on the hand. But uh, obviously tonight he's picking it up. Well, to me, that was a textbook run. His feet never stopped. His pad level was really nice. He ran through two tackles and uh, was able to go ahead and finish with some speed, too. He had a nice little burst at the end. Dare I say it? Herschel Walker-like. <laughs> Those are some big shoes. <laughs> some big shoes. Did you get a number of the guy that's injured? I did not. I, I, didn't see see, I didn't see what happened to him. It had to have been on the line. You know what I thought Coach was going to say? Did it's you get a number on that train? It's, your, it's, your, it's the linebacker 33. Yeah, time. Shelton. Boy, oh, and man. you know you cannot keep losing. If you're Eddie Eviston, you're thinking, man, I lose Timmerman, one of my best linebackers, to an ACL last year. I lose uh, last week uh, against Sycamore. I lose uh, uh, Darlington, my best running back, after the first game to a broken leg. And now, if this young, I mean, a lot of injuries over there for Coach Eviston. From from what I'm hearing, apparently it was a knee to the or a, a helmet to the knee. That's not good. 2-10 to go in the first half, guys. But how big is that touchdown there by the Knights' Jalen Jones to put him up 12-2? Uh, to two. Do you think they'll go for the two-point conversion here? Well, any any points in this weather are going to be big. Right now, in this, I mean, right now in this in this game, any points I think are big. And and with the, with the so far, special teams wise, the execution with the snaps has not been been uh, stellar, so I, I I would consider going for two here. What about you, Coach? Oh, yeah, I would go for two. I think that uh, they have a – I know Coach Perry practices about four two-point conversion plays. Coach me and uh, Shelton up, walking off on his own power. That's a good sign for the uh, big linebacker for Covcat. 12-2 to two here. Uh, next Friday, uh, Covington Catholic plays Beachwood, a powerhouse out of Fort Mitchell, mm -hmm. and Lexington Catholic is over in Richmond playing Madison Central next Friday night. That looks to be our uh, a big game next Friday night night over at uh, Lex Cath and Madison Central. Coach Walker, you'll be with me on that one. Coach Meehan will be out of town. You're allowed to go out of town occasionally, Coach. Just one time this year, I'm my favorite nephew. Whistle blows that. Uh, they're going to kick the extra point. They're not going for two to points. Are you that publicly? That you have a favorite nephew? Or uh, just I, I can say it because, you know, you ever since he was a little peanut, <laughs> we've, been, we've been close. Any other uh, special uh, folks you got a shout out to tonight, Coach? Well, yeah, I, I actually, last week, if you remember, I have people in California listening yes, watching, sir. watching yes, to sir. it. And if they're listen, watching again on prepspin.com, I think uh, hello to them. And my friend Dennis in Pittsburgh, he's probably watching at least at least with the sound muted because he doesn't want to hear me. But. Here's the uh, kick up, and it is going to be good. Out of the hold of Thompson for, for Morris, 13-2 to two is your score. 
Lexington Catholic leading 13 to 2, 210 to go here in the first half. We'll return on night vision produced by Prep Spin here to Lexington Catholic after this timeout. What if you could do all your banking without ever having to run to your bank? What if you could do your banking from any stadium or city in the country? Coming Catholic news, just stay with the running game, boys. Stay with it. It's worked, hasn't it? Yeah. If they even think about throwing, it needs to be on the first, first down. Way to go to this one, baby. You scored again. This one, baby. Online and mobile banking. Winners at home. 13 points. 11 point lead is in this rain. 4, 4, Ryan McKinnis. And 23, Anthony Vess. Feet for the tournament. Francisco Rios. Welcome back. Uh, it's uh, two minutes and ten seconds to go, Gary. And what do you think is going to go on? And here? that's Francisco Rijos kicking there. For Rijos. Now he's there's two number ones, and he's uh, not more. So obviously that's Rijos. Here's a return Rijos. up to the forty, turning on the Jets and to the uh, forty yard line. Nice return there by Best. Anthony Best with the return and nearly broke it there for the uh, Colonels. Rawati making the uh, stomp, but uh, Anthony Best with the return and. Looking to mark it at the 41-yard line. Great uh, burst of speed there by Anthony Best. And he did a great job of protecting the football, too, once he felt contact. And that's 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 big time in, in weather like we have tonight. And I really like the effort Rawati had to, to run him down, too. He just chased him for a long way before it caught him. A.J. Mayer, the 6'3 uh, sophomore quarterback. He's going out of the shotgun. He sends uh, McClure to the bottom. He's got... Twin receivers in motion now, McGinnis, and he's going to give it to him, the motion guy. And McGinnis up in it at the 39, short pickup of about two. Far side there, stacking him up. There were a couple big – I saw big number 11 getting up off the pile. Of course, that's the that's a Zach Middleton, the 6'2", 230-pounder, guys. Middleton uh, making a nice play there. Just a minute 40, Coach, in the first half with uh, – Here's the mayor looking. He's got a receiver down there and overshoots him down inside the uh, five-yard line. And uh, tender receiver was Ian Sumi. Got rough in the pass. Yeah, rough in the pass. That, uh, that really hurts you. But I thought it was really interesting. He jumps in there without a huddle. Yep. They've been, they've been going slow. They've been pretty much going from a huddle. He jumps in there without a huddle under center instead of shotgun, throws a little pass down the field. Um, it's a pretty good call, actually. Yep. Um, well, it, and, you know, I, it, you may have let them know a little something, Coach Meehan, because I noticed that they started to bail out uh, into pass coverage before the ball was even snapped. Yep. Even though they did get beat deep, they started to bail out early. That late hit, guys, is 15 yards. That will take it down to the 24. How huge would it be for Covcath here to put some points up on the board going to the locker room? It's a minute 34 with uh, Lexcath leading 13-2. to It would be huge for the Colonels. But you can't afford to make a mistake here, Gary. Big, big mistake could really hurt you. Sends France in motion. He gives to France on the sweep. Uh, France hit, immediately dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but nice play there. Turned in by the uh, defensive uh, lineman there for the uh, Knights. I still think inside. Uh, Lexington Catholic's really defending the perimeter right now. I think inside run has, has been more effective for Kevcath right now. Dylan Coulter, here's a quick pass right side, incomplete. Trying to go over there on the uh, Fagan there, the intended receiver. Couldn't come up with it. Yeah, if they're, if they're going to attack anywhere besides the A-gap, maybe pull that backside guard and tackle again and hit up in there real hard on a power or, or, a, or, a, or a trap play. Uh, but, again, Throwing is not their forte. They nah. really, really need to hit that, hit those runs. Big score out of Louisville. Louisville male 14, Trinity 6 in that game. <laughs> male, you picked male last year, yeah. and they folded on I'm there. on the male bandwagon, aren't I? Minute five here in this one in the first half. Mayor getting pressure, sets it up, nearly picked off over the middle, getting a paw in that. Boy, I tell you, that was nearly intercepted. Yeah, they they, uh, they did a good job of reading that screen pass, just sitting right on top of it. See, I, it got a strong kicker. I think you kick this and make it a one possession game. This may be the situation, coach. That's yeah, so they're lining up for it, but again, you got to worry about the snap. Forty-one yard field goal attempt by Klaska. Klaska from the uh, thirty-one forty-one yard attempt. 
Placement down. The kick by Klaus Gazep. Got plenty of leg. Wow. And he is going to nail it. What a kick. That would have been good from about 50, guys. Much less 41. In the rain. Nice kick. So Klaska makes it uh, with 57 seconds, makes it Lexington Catholic 13, Covington Catholic 5, and we are live tonight on Night Vision and produced by Prepsman William Warfield, Gary Ball with uh, Coach Mike Meehan, Donnie Walker. Just check the Herald Leader uh, every Friday for the game we have here. And, Coach, uh, we appreciate the Herald Leader and uh, all the folks down there for w- what they do for high school sports. They do. Uh, they do. Hey, and I've got a couple good ones at halftime. I have a, have a, have a couple really good UFOs yes, you at do. halftime. So. I was going to give you a plug on that. The UFOs coming up, and you've got a great interview lined up as well at halftime. I do. A really interesting young man for, for a Lexington Catholic. Heralded football overachievers. Mike yeah, Meehan started right. that f- uh, years ago, and it's become a big staple here on our broadcast. The unheralded football overachievers. I'll never get over the young man from Bowling Green, though, a few years ago that oh. was uh, struck by lightning, declared dead, and, and but he came back and uh, was a manager for the uh, Bowling Green yeah, Purple. Right, he declared dead. Then they said he was be, would be blind and couldn't hear, but now. Here he is, manager for the Purples and just doing a great job. Hey, what a weapon it is, Donnie. You called it, kicking the field goal. What a weapon it is when you have a Klaska who can nail a 41-yarder, and that would have been good for 50. Well, and right before halftime, to get your offense to put some points on the board, I think it's going to you know, it, it, it's going to give them some momentum, I do believe, at least give them some confidence as they come back out for the second half. Klaska set to kick with uh, Akbugu and Thompson back deep for the uh, Knights. Here's going to be Andy Thompson from the 10. He's at the 15. Thompson cutting to the near side. He breaks a tackle to 30, and he's up to the 35 and the 40-yard line. Good return by Thompson of 30 yards. Boy, Andy Thompson, what a weapon that is. You know, we saw it on the uh, last uh, return by Cupcat by Best. It was Best who set all that up, guys. Oh, right. That field goal with that nice return down to the 40-yard line. Then the penalty, of course. And how be. big is contain, Coach? Oh, no kidding. Biggest contain is just coming out here and knocking him, using the sideline right. as an extra defender. That's what you have to do. What would you do here, Donnie? Would you be conservative or? or? I would see what we get on first down. I did. They're going to set up the screen that they scored on. And they give it to Jones. He's at midfield. Jalen, and boy, he's running hard tonight. Picks a go to uh, Jalen Jones. That's already gone for a touchdown tonight of 15. And, of course, uh, Jalen Jones has been the workhorse tonight, guys. He has two touchdowns. And uh, one thing about J.J., when he gets that ball, he knows what to do with it. Shelton, Shelton came in to make the tackle on that. First down to the 43. Shields. Fago rolling to the left. Fago sets, throws it uh, deep down the right side, and it is oh, incomplete down to the 10-yard line. And a great defensive player. Akbugu, the intended receiver. So here's where the here's where this no huddle offense really pays off for you because they're not they didn't have to take a timeout there. They're playing their normal speed, and and they're able to get two plays in here. And that was a pretty darn good throw, but it was just covered really well. It looks like it's still kind of raining, guys, but it's not raining as hard as it was uh, earlier in this first half. 13-5, to 5, 29 seconds to go here at Joseph K. Ford Stadium, campus of Langston Catholic, and it's oh, going to be uh, against the uh, Knights, the penalty. It's a big penalty. Mm. That's going to hurt him. They, this changes your yeah, thinking does. right here. Yeah. The thing I'm liking tonight, though, even a legend Brumball is injured, the starting quarterback for the Knights, I'm liking the way Jalen Jones is running the football tonight and catching the football out of the backfield. Well, and as you see the game unfold, Kirk uh, Fago is, is really starting to kind of come into his own now. You can see that he's, yes. he's gaining some confidence. Getting some more with comfortable. Mm-hmm. Is that what you look for? Right. The, yeah, the feet? Are you watching the happy feet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I mean, he just, you can just see that he's more confident well, in the, running the offense right now. Yeah, he is. I agree. Coach, you, I got two really good uh, quarterback coaches up here with me in the press box tonight. I'm just really curious. First and 15, there's not a lot in your playbook with 29 seconds here. Penalty flag down. Yeah, that's a tailback's fault. The running back stepped forward before the ball was snapped. UFOs coming up. That's going to be against the Knights. Moving back five more yards. So they're going the wrong way. They just. The uh, coaches up top are not agreeing with that call at all. I, I, I think I agree with those guys up top right now. 29 seconds. I really like this officiating crew, but I, I, I think they may have made a mistake. Well, what did right you now. see? 
Because they just spotted the ball, and the and the offense got up to get on the ball, and, the, and I think they were still standing over. Well, they're talking about it, guys. What yeah. I what basically what I saw was the was the running back lean forward and take a step forward before yeah. before I, the I, movement. I, I actually got to go watch this. He's going to wave it off. They're going to wave it off. You know, I got to watch them go in preseason camp. I know exactly what you're talking about. I saw that in camp, and they did that several times in practice, and I I uh, I've wondered about that if that was going to bite them. Well, the uh, fit, the uh, coaches up top of the press box. They made that call, huh? <laughs> made that call for us. Low for go. Quick pass out to the far side. Caught down to the 40-yard uh, line. Out of bounds. And gets out of bounds over there. Donovan Morris, the reception. And Morris got out of bounds. There's a good look at Donovan. As we said, a good basketball player for the uh, Knights and Brandon Salzman. And an outstanding receiver. I don't I don't think there's any question, guys, that Agbubu, Ag, uh, J.J. Agbugu, and Morris are two of the best tandem receivers in this area, Coach. I believe I agree with you 100%. Well, I, to get off that point just a little bit, I, I think you got two plays to get first down here. In this Leads it out to Thompson. He cuts back. Thompson trying to reverse it, spinning. And Thompson, there's a late flag coming down. Flags coming from everywhere. Too much dancing, Coach, especially in this situation. I tell you what, that drives me crazy. Well, who I was mean, it, the Ohio State player that did that spin move with yeah. uh, Braxton, Braxton Miller? Miller. He but, was doing his Braxton Miller imitation but, out there. I've said this before. When you try out these players, you know, you want you – want, you've got players that will run into trees, and you have players that will run through trees. You know, we want, we want the ones that run through and around trees. Right. We don't want the ones that right. run into – into trees. And these guys yeah, run into trees there. is not a good thing. Well, that, that's never a good I, idea. I understand that that's his, you know, his his ability is that he's quick and he's elusive and that kind of thing. But he needs to understand down and distance and time on the clock. Every time he dances like that, he's wasting precious time off the clock right now. Which is 11.6 seconds and Lex Cath leading 13 to five here, right before halftime. Go looking over toward the sideline, gives to JJ, and he is hit, and there's that defensive end Steins He's making the play again, and that should do it. I don't think they're going to even going to stop it before halftime. That'll do it for the first half. So we go to the locker room, Lexington Catholic 13, Covington Catholic 5. We'll come back with Coach Mike Meehan in halftime and his UFO special interviews here at 13 to 5. Lexington Catholic on top here on night vision and prep spin. Kentucky Children's Hospital is here to care for Kentucky's kids. From primary care to serious illness, we are specially trained to address their unique needs. Kentucky Children's Hospital is one of only two hospitals in the state with specially trained pediatric surgeons, a level four NICU for the tiniest babies, a pediatric ICU, and a 24-hour pediatric emergency room to care for the most critically ill or injured children. We are here to provide whatever care your child needs. Are you a Kentucky high school sports fan? Do you know where to find the latest news and information on your team, your competition, and high school sports action across the state? Join the fun and excitement at BluegrassPreps.com. You can support your favorite team, test your sports knowledge, and share news and views at BluegrassPreps.com. For all the latest on Kentucky high school sports, other sports, and a whole world of lively discussion, get on board at BluegrassPreps.com. What if you could do all your banking without ever having to run to your bank? What if you could do your banking from any stadium or city in the country? It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. With traditional banks, online and mobile banking, it couldn't be more simple. My life moves pretty fast, and traditional banks team protects me while I do what I do best, at home or away. Way to go, traditional bank. You scored again. Traditional banks, online and mobile banking. Winners at home and on the road. Traditional bank. Nice job today. Thanks, Coach. Proud of you. We'll get back at it tomorrow. If we lose focus on the field, it could cost us a penalty or even the game. If you lose focus behind the wheel by texting and driving, it costs you a fine or worse, your life. Big Blue Nation, don't text and drive. Now you can support Prep Spin and buy a DVD of this game broadcast.
Right. Welcome back to Jason A. Ford Stadium. It's halftime with Lexington Catholic in the lead, 13-5 over the Covington Catholic Colonels. We have a feature that we like to do at halftime every, every game we do. Gary and I came up with this years ago. We call it the UFO, which, is, we, which stands for the Unheralded Football Overachiever. And what I do is I get and t I talk to both coaches from each team before the game, the week before the game, and I get them to give me some information and a name of somebody on their team or in their program who goes above and beyond for the program but doesn't get a lot of recognition for what they do. Now, we have had managers, we've had players, we've had assistant coaches, we even had coaches' wives, we've had custodians, we've had all different variety of people who basically are involved in the program in any way, male or female. Today we've got a couple good ones. We're going to start with, uh, real quickly, with Covington Catholic. I talked to their coach and Coach Eviston, and he told me right away, he didn't even hesitate, that uh, junior manager, student manager Blake Cecil. Blake is, a very, is very deserving of, re of recognition, uh, Coach Evanson said. He spends a lot of time helping out, but he's one of those guys that Coach Evanson told me that'll do anything he's asked for the program. He's, he's the guy that's out there early for practice in the summer, and in the cold weather, the same thing, doing everything. He's an extremely valuable part of the team. And the coaches on his staff said that he's just as important as just any player on the football team. So congratulations to Covenant Catholics, Blake Cecil. For Lexington Catholic, and we have a we have a special guest here. We have our UFO in the in the uh, press box with us. Let me tell you a little bit about him first, and then we'll talk to him. His name's Kyle McMillan. Kyle was a junior quarterback. Kyle was uh, injured early in the year. He tore the labrum in his throwing shoulder, which which means he's out for this year. Very disappointing to a young man, man like Kyle, who was so dedicated to the program, who cares so much about the Knights, but. Let me tell you what Coach Perry told me first before we go on to talk to Kyle himself. Kyle, he, uh, Kyle said that he has a – what happens was Coach Perry said a lot of times in his career coaching, when a kid gets hurt and he's out for the season, especially early in the year, he disappears. It's not saying he's a bad guy. It just means that he loses interest in what's going on. He feels bad because he's not playing, and he doesn't come to practice after a while, maybe a few couple times a week and so on. Coach Perry made a special point to tell me Kyle's not like that at all. He said that Kyle was one of those young men who, who adjusts to the situation. First of all, he made, me, um, made sure that I told you that Kyle worked harder than just about anybody on the team in the offseason. He ranks him in the top five or six people as far as hard work, improving his speed, his strength, his agility, and so on. And yet he had the injury. But again, Kyle adjusted the situation. We're going to talk to Kyle for a little bit about what he's doing and why he is soaking wet standing here in the press box talking to me right now. Kyle, it's really good to see you again. Good to see you, Coach. Uh, Kyle and I go back a little ways. When he was a young whippersnapper, I worked with him a little bit at quarterback a couple of days. His, his uh, parents are, are, are good friends, too, here in the city and, and big boosters here, as far as I know, about, with Lexington Catholic. Let's talk to you a little bit. Why are you soaking wet, Kyle? Uh, I just love to be out here, and I still want to be a part of the team. So where are you? What are you doing? Um, I'm on top of the press box, and, well, usually I'm taking videos, but tonight it's raining so hard, there's no videos. So we're just communicating to the quarterbacks about what we see. And that's, that's an interesting job. You know, we have got a couple – we have a quarterback guru right here with Donnie Walker. And, uh, Donnie, we may have a future coach on our hand right here to be able to do that. I'm always looking for good coaches. You, uh, you basically are on the press box – and how are you communicating with these? Do you have a headset or are you doing it some other way? Well, Coach Cantrell has a headset. He calls all of our plays up there. And uh, I just see what I, you know, see what the safeties are doing, all the corners, and then I communicate to him and he talks to the quarterbacks. Okay, tell me something. When, you, when did you learn to do this? Did you study film? Uh, how do you know the offense so well? Um, yeah, studying film is a big part. And also just playing helps a lot. You can uh, identify, you know, what the safeties, corners, what the patterns are. Okay, now I'm going to hit you with the question, Kyle. When you first got hurt, what did that feel like to you? I mean, was there, was there major disappointment and then you had to go home and, you know, get in your room, close the door, stare in the mirror and figure out where you're going with this or what? Yeah, that was – the initial, it was terrible. Um, I hated it. Uh, it. It just killed me, but – you know, I got to learn to suck it up and just – it happened, so there's nothing I could do about it. Tell me how you got, got injured. Um, it was in the spring game, I think. Uh, 
they said it could have been overuse injury. They don't know. Um, it started hurting real bad when I threw it um, every time. So we went to the doctor, and they, it was definitely torn. Well, I heard from uh, Coach Perry, actually, and, and one other person that your overuse might be because there was a there weren't very many quarterbacks in spring practice besides you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Baseball, probably, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and you don't play baseball. So mm -hmm. basically what happens in the spring a lot of times is, your, is some of your players, especially your skilled players, go, uh, go to uh, baseball and, and are still playing in leagues and so on. All right, real quickly, one more, one more thing. When, when, you, uh, when you see the field and you look for things out here and you communicate it, what is the reaction of the coaching staff? Um, they just, they're, they're grateful for, you know, what I can look at and what, because everyone, one person can't see everything. So all the eyes that are up there needed. Okay. Now that's the reason I brought that up is from what also what the coaches told me. And they said, you're really valuable with that because you do know what's going on. You look out there, you see things. And honestly, um, I spent a lot of years when I was coaching as assistant coach in the press box, calling offensive plays and doing so on. You can see a whole lot more up there. Oh yeah. How do you like this get up? We can see we got a close up here. We can see close, uh, close uh, up here, and, and and then on the field also. So we got a mate out here in the press box with prep spin. Okay, Kyle, I'll tell you what. I'm really impressed with what you're doing. The coaches are really impressed with what you're doing. We are all of us up here, Gary and Donnie both, we want to congratulate you on being a guy who cares about your football team. It's not going to let a little injury hold you back. You're going to do everything you can to help. Yes, sir. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you, Coach. Thank Thanks you. again. Congratulations to our two UFOs, Blake Cecil from Coming to Catholic and Kyle McMillan from Listening Catholic. We'll be back here in a few minutes, or just a couple of a short break. Is that all right, William? All right, we'll take a short break and be back with Gary, and I think we have another guest. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's ball game. Lexington Catholic hopes to pave the way for the future of high school sports broadcasting through this exciting new digital network. If you would like to get your business into the game as a Night Vision sponsor, please contact Delane Thiel at 277-7183, extension 253, or dthiel at lexingtoncatholic.com. Go Knights! Now you can support Prep Spin and buy a DVD of this game broadcast. We appreciate all the fan support out there, and we are glad that we're now able to offer you a chance to own this game broadcast on DVD. All you have to do is just follow the link in the video description below to order now. They're only $30 for a limited time only. Back live on the Night Vision and Prep Spinboard Halftime. The uh, Knights 13, the Colonels 5 here. Lexi Catholic Cupcath. We're joined by the newest member of our talent crew here, Jack Healy. He'll be interning with us on the Night Vision. Good to have you. And uh, what are you looking forward to most uh, working with uh, the Prep Spin and the Night Vision this season? Uh, working with this new whole thing that they have here at Lexington Catholic, I'm really trying to get some more hands-on experience with what I'm trying to get my interest in. Uh, for sort of for set, set my goals for uh, what I'm trying to get through through high school and also towards college. What year are you at uh, LexCat? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore. So you got a couple years to develop this talent, Mr. Healy. So uh, what have you noticed by this football team, even though uh, Legend Brumball gets the injury, a lot of resilience there, and Jalen Jones is really picking up his game. I feel like Jalen Jones has really stepped up his game um, more 
for it more uh, than everybody assumed he would. He's been pulling plenty of yards and grabbed those two touchdowns there in the first uh, first quarter of the game, and he's been doing incredibly well, especially with his uh, broken wrist, I believe. Yeah, and you got to like the fact that uh, Lexington Catholic allows students to get involved in, in things like night vision, and that's what you need. You need that practical, hands-on experience, and as a sophomore, that's something you can do for a couple more years. Yes, sir. Tell us about uh, the uh, – Lexington Catholic uh, family, community, what makes it such a special place? Um, really what's making Lexington Catholic a special place is, I guess, the, the sense of family, you know, that we're grabbing everybody, taking everybody together um, and bringing everybody in as one and sort of a big community ourselves, more than just being a, a school in a high school or being more of a community and a family. Jack, did you have other siblings, brothers, sisters, anybody that went to Lexington Catholic, uh, kind of as to mention that family theme? Yes, sir. My uh, father went here when uh, he was my age and went through high school here. And then my sister also, who is uh, older than me, she's currently at UK, she went through here as well. Keeping it in the family, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, we're looking forward to working with you. And uh, and uh, anything that we can help you with, you let us know. You're working with the king of stream there now, William <laughs> Warfield. He, he's going to write a book here because uh, he's the best in the business in making this look. I mean, even with the down Downpour. It's still raining out there. Look how great the uh, video is here on Night Vision and Prep Spin. With the and it was really pouring down in the first quarter. So uh, kudos to you and and William and uh, look forward to working with you this season. I'm glad to be here. Thank That's you very much, Jack Healy, our newest addition to the talent level here. The talent pool just keeps growing here on, on Night Vision with William Moorfield and Jack Healy. We'll come back give you some first half numbers. A big number on that board though is 13 to five. Lexington Catholic leads Cubcat here. We'll return on Night Vision and Prep Spin. Thank Thanks to Jack Ely for joining us, our new intern. Are you a Kentucky high school sports fan? Do you know where to find the latest news and information on your team, your competition, and high school sports action across the state? Join the fun and excitement at BluegrassPreps.com. You can support your favorite team, test your sports knowledge, and share news and views at BluegrassPreps.com for all the latest on Kentucky high school sports, other sports, and a whole world of lively discussion. Get on board at BluegrassPreps.com. What if you could do all your banking without ever having to run to your bank? What if you could do your banking from any stadium or city in the country? It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. With traditional banks, online and mobile banking, it couldn't be more simple. My life moves pretty fast, and traditional bank's team protects me while I do what I do best, at home or away. Way to go, traditional bank. You scored again. Traditional bank, online and mobile banking. Winners at home and on the road. Traditional bank. And we want to thank our sponsor tonight, Traditional Bank. Of course, uh, it's a tradition at Tradition Bank. We also want to thank Collins Bowling Lanes in Eastland and Southland. Thanks to Collins Bowling Lanes for sponsoring Night Vision as well. 
And we want to thank, of course, the fine folks at Lexington Clinic. Lexington Clinic, the uh, team physicians and trainers for Lexington Catholic. Thanks to those sponsors tonight, Gary Ball with Mike Meehan, Donnie Walker in tonight. He'll be with me next week for the uh, game of the week as Coach Meehan will be out of town at a wedding with William Warfield, our producer. Thanks to uh, Jack uh, Healy for joining us at halftime, our newest addition. And, guys, it's this uh, we just keep growing here. Now we got interns, Jack Healy from uh, Lexington Catholic. And, uh, boy, that young man you talked to at halftime, Coach, what a great young man. What a super kid. And uh, he's got a future, whether it's football or something else. You could just tell. He's got a. He really has a future. Hey, uh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, we're having Donnie here, and mm -hmm. Donnie's drawing up plays. <laughs> if we had napkins, he'd be drawing up plays on napkins. We have a little piece of paper here. Donnie, what were you trying to say here? Well, I was just talking about the, the defensive adjustment that uh, Langston Catholic made where they're basically playing eight guys in the box. And early on, what, uh, you know, what Covenant Catholic was doing was they were motioning another back into the backfield so that they could get what they were getting was a six-man box when they would do that where they could block that so that they had the numbers. So they could block six with six and still have a running back left over to run with. But now, now that Langston Catholic has seen the struggles that Cubcats had with the passing game, they're just cramming eight guys into the box. But Cubcath has had some success running into the A-gap right behind their guards. Mm -hmm. And if, if Lexington Catholic continues to line up this way and take away the perimeter, I think that is I think that is where uh, Cubcath needs to attack. And we're seeing the old Jalen Jones coach that we saw last year run for 1,600 yards and 25 touchdowns and was the region player of the year. But that's a J.J. we're seeing tonight. Yeah, and with good running form, he's staying low. He's getting his pads down below the defense and so on. So, and, and uh, coming to Catholic, Donnie, to your point, one of the things they can do is pull those backside people, too, and get an extra blockers in the hole, right. too. So. And, and, you know, Eddie's a smart coach, and he's an offensive <laughs> coach, and he'll make some adjustments. I look for them to have a little bit more offensive success in the second half. Rio set to kick off for the uh, Knights. Second half action. Thank you, Coach, for those UFOs at halftime. No, it's, it's a pleasure. I love doing it. Rio's kick, and it will drive McGinnis back to the 11. McGinnis out to the 15. McGinnis dances, now 25. Now turns on the speed up to the 40. McGinnis up near midfield. He's to the 40. He's got Rios, and Rios, the kicker, runs him out inside the 30-yard line. He had Francisco Rios to beat, but Rios did his job. That's what you tell a kicker to do. Make sure that return man does not get past you, and that saved a touchdown, but a great return. kicker tackle right there when it goes. It was. He basically ran into him, and and he had the sideline to help him, too. Yeah, the sideline got an assist on that, but Rios is glad the sideline was there. I don't know who got the worst end of that deal. I don't either, tell you the truth, but, it, but, you know, he's proud of what he did. He did another, he great re another great return, guys, by Cub Calf. So they'll start inside the uh, at the 25-yard line. Handoff uh, goes to Dyer. And Dyer dives down to about to 23. Grant Dyer, boy, he was the uh, big ball carrier for them pretty much in the first half, guys. Now You've that the some, rain has subsided, I there's wonder. There's some uh, stats, Coach, that uh, we got. Cup, if Cup Cath will go back to some of the option look that they tried to run in the first half. They could. Eli Mitchell made that tackle. We'll talk a little bit more about him later. But, uh, again, he's got to get his pads down and drive that, that runner backward. A.J. Mayer fakes now, rolling to the right, being chased, and Mayer's going to be run out of bounds on the far side. There was an option look right there, right on cue, huh? Looking at some stats real quickly, Gary. Rushing Dyer. We talked about Dyer lot. His 10 attempts for 49 yards. Mayer, six attempts for 17 yards. Uh, McGinnis, six for 13. And, and that, of course, is for, course is for Covenant Catholic. For Lexington Catholic, Jones, 83 yards in the first half, buddy. 13 carries, 83 yards. And Thompson has only 12 yards, but he probably has 90 if you count all the dancing around. Motion by France, and Mayer out of the shotgun this time. Mayer getting uh -oh. pressure from the right mm. side. He exactly loses the football, uh -oh. but jump back on there by Dyer. Dyer jumped back on it. He never saw that one coming. It was Fago who came in there and made the big-time hit. The quarterback, I'm not sure he ever saw Fago, guys. He never did. And that, that is the quarterback's man right there. He, he basically has to identify that guy. You take a look down the field, you get your pass receivers in the route you want them, you either identify that man and play off of him, or you get an extra blocker. And what a great you. call by Kevin Brugman, the defensive coordinator, to call that uh, Fago blitz from the left side, which was the uh, blind side from that quarterback, Mayor, who's a right-handed passer. Absolutely. 
So fourth and long. Mayer looking, looking. Throws it deep down. He's got a wide open receiver incomplete. He had him wide open. He had the receiver wide open. McGinnis overthrew him. He continues to run. He can run right under that ball and make a, make a play. So a great, another great kickoff return that, that winds up with no points. Uh, for go was eight, uh, completed eight passes for 77 yards. Brumball before it went but, out. But as Donnie Walker said, Coach Meehan, uh, really settled into the quarterback position. He has. He has. And, and I think uh, – We'll see him start to improve again. Nice throw there. Throws a great ball to Agbugu there to the 38. That's a nice well-thrown football, guys. Over there to J.J. Agbugu. Thiel make the hit for Cub Cath. Pickup of about uh, four, second down and six. 10.05 to go, third period. If you're just tuning in, Gary Ball, Mike, me, and Donnie Walker, William Warfield, 13-5. to Lexney Gathic leading Cub Cath. Here's uh, Jalen Jones to the 40 and to the 41-yard line, short of the first down. Be third and short. Jalen Jones making the – obviously the linebacker, Alex Shelton, is okay because he made the play on that. Remember, he was injured late in that first half, guys. He's really been everywhere on this football team. Third down on the yard for Fago. And Fago tucks it himself. He's got some room. Fago midfield down to the 45-yard line. A nice 15-yard pickup by Kirk Fago. He faked it in the belly of 24, J.J., and uh, Cubcath bit for that, guys. And when they did, that opened up things for Fago. Well, this is reminiscent of the very first drive of the game, and that was another zone read that, that was big for them when the quarterback pulled it in the first, in the first drive of, uh, of the game. That went 80 yards for the uh, touchdown pass to Jones. Sorry. Here's the pass near side. It's caught by Bennington down to the 42-yard line. Bo Bennington with the catch. Bennington picks up about, uh, looks like about four yards. I really like the way Fago is throwing the football right now, guys. I think you said it, Donnie, back in the second quarter, really throwing some good balls right now, especially those out throws. And, well, it's, and it's not raining now, right, so it's exactly, giving a little bit of rain. Exactly. Advantage. He's got a, he's Here's got a Jones. better grip right now. Jones down to the 38. Going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. And let's see, big lineman there, number 89. That's Josh Galvin. Galvin, when I say big, 6'2", 220. But, guys, I don't care. If you're 6'2", 220 and you can move like Galvin, you're going to be a pretty good high school football player. We've already seen that from Stein's a defensive end at 220. Here's a quick pass over to the far side, caught, and to, down to the 32. That's Morris, and Donovan takes it to the 32. First down uh, for the Knights. Guys, don't think this 13-5 score. This is a big drive right here for Lexington Catholic at a critical point starting the second half of this football game. Mixing up, running pass pretty well. Uh, I really like the play calling right now. Well, they're, doing, they're, 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 throwing, they're making throws that he can make, too. You know, they're calling plays that he can run. Jones diving down to the 28-yard uh, line. They've thrown first down hitches the last the last two first downs they've had to the short side of the field, and then they throw a nice little screen. They, they're, they're playing within their quarterback. Coach, what did uh, Jalen Jones have in the first half rushing for the uh, – did you already say that? I'm sorry if you already did. Uh, Jalen Jones had 83 yards in the first 83 half. 83 yards, yeah. So he's got a good ball game going tonight. 7.59 to play in the third, 13-5, to five, but the Knights on the march. And here's Balserac, and he takes it down to the 25-yard line. Down to the 25-yard line. Okay, now Covenant Catholic is just starting to adjust a little bit. They pinched down inside with their, with their tackles that time. Their linebackers are still back five yards. They're coming to the ball. Though. Cam Butler made that last play. Here's Jones and Jalen down close to the uh, – 20-yard line and close to the first down marker. Jalen Jones, boy, one thing about uh, Jalen as making the stop, Salmons, Ethan Salmons making the hit. But, guys, one thing about Jalen Jones, he knows where that first down marker is. I, as I said before, and I think Coach has said it too, he's done a great job of running, with, running underneath his pads. You know, he's getting, gotten low and, and picked up the yardage that he's needed. First down for the uh, Knights. Here's Jones right down the middle again and picks up a couple of yards. And, again, the linebacker, uh, Sammons, helping out on that play. Ethan Sammons and also the, Butler. The defensive line, they're pretty much Don't doing their job. They're occupying these blockers and they're actually pushing them back a step. The linebackers just aren't coming up quick enough to make these tackles. Quarterback, Quarterback uh, if I go, and he's going to pay. There's a flag down, though, as he's pulled down. 
that quarterback Pull. counter has not been not been there for them tonight. They have defended that play really well. They have struggled to just just defend the, the regular inside zone. Well, another great play, guys, by Steins, a defensive end. I mean, he's mm -hmm. just uh, he's hard to block out there. Well, and that play that's that's the attack point right there. And if you can't knock if you can't kick him out, you're not that play's not going to be successful. Join us next Friday night for another big uh, game of the week, a night vision prep spin, and uh, looks like our game of the week, check the Herald later, will be at Madison Central next Friday night with William Warfield. Madison Central, Lexington Catholic. Looking forward to that, Donnie Walker. You'll be uh, working that game with me. And Lexington Christian on prep spin on their uh, digital network against Walton Verona, so doubleheader next week. Rolling here, it's going to throw it back to the near side, and it's uh, caught over there, but oh, it's not nice. going anywhere. Boy, little uh, little tunnel screen. Tunnel screen, but I tell you what, it was spelled out by the Colonel defense. The, the as soon as uh, Agbugu got that ball, they were right on top of him. That's a tough play. When you run that screen, you come back toward the ball, but you've got to get upfield. You've got to get behind your lineman and try to get upfield with your shoulder square. Donnie, these DNs, Steins and Butler, mm. are outstanding. Well, the misdirection stuff has not worked for Lexington Catholic because the defense for Cuffcath has just stayed home. Third and 21 for Fago. Looking, throws it deep down the middle, and it's going to be intercepted. Picked off inside the five-yard line, intercepted. And it's picked off. And that's probably better than a punt right there. And they say he dropped it, though, as he came down. He had the mm. pick, but they say he dropped it. So he came down with it, but the official uh, right on top of it said that uh, he dropped the ball there as he came down. That may turn out to be a, a good thing for Cuff Cat. So here's Zach Middleton coming uh, into punt. McGinnis uh, back to receive the punt. So he had it there for a moment, but as he went down, he must have dropped the football. It's the only thing we can figure. I think they're going to come back to that sooner or later because Donovan Morris was wide open down the sideline. Middleton's punt, and it's a good punt. McGinnis will watch it uh, sail into the end zone for the touchback. So, and Like I said, that was uh, another fortuitous yeah. play that, uh, that they didn't catch that interception, or they would have been they would have been backed up in their own end zone. Now they get to come back out to the 20. Right, right. 6.03 to go in the third quarter here tonight. Also, as we said, we want to thank uh, UK uh, Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. UK Sports Medicine keeps you in the game. Uh, check them every Saturday at uh, noon on the Scholastic Ball Report. Uh, tomorrow, Rob Ullery's on talking about injuries and when to come back from injuries, and it's good stuff there. Motion they give to the motion guy, McGinnis, and McGinnis up to the 25. He's got a little seam, and he takes it up to about the 27. Late flag coming in. Late flag coming in from the uh, referee, and it's going to be a against a cup calf. That's going to help. That's going to help. Those yeah, penalties they finally had a down. really nice first down play and got something going on the perimeter, and then it gets negated by a personal foul. Jack Fago helped out on that stop, but uh, the penalty will move it back. Yeah, we've mentioned uh, several times that we mentioned Eli Mitchell. Yes. And uh, his brother, by the way, plays college football for Furman. Uh -huh. And they're, uh, they're at a big game tomorrow with Virginia Tech. So that, that'll be a big one. So Eli Mitchell comes from a family of some football players here. Yeah, I remember Noah. You and I called a number of Noah Mitchell's oh, games absolutely. here at, over the years here at uh, Joseph K. Ford Stadium. And, guys, we got to talk about it. You're heading down to South Carolina tomorrow, Coach Man. Walker. And we got to talk about that U.K. game tomorrow night. Mayor. Nice Looks and throws it, and it's going to be incomplete. He was under a lot of duress back there and got a little happy feet in that pocket because it was starting to close in on him back there and overshoots it over the far sideline. Yeah, I, I, the passing game is just not very fluid, and I, I know that the you know I, Coach Evanston is is very adept at, 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 at running an offense, an All American quarterback right. at Georgetown. So it's it's obviously going to take him a little time to get this put together the way that he wants it, but uh, they're struggling right now in the passing game for sure. Third and sixteen, Mayor is a sophomore. Motion by France, AJ Mayor back. Looking right, throws, and a good diving effort over there. And it looks like it's uh, caught on the uh, far side. Fourth down. Out of bounds. Said he was out of bounds. You know, Donnie, now, 
when I when I was coaching, one of the things if I ran into a situation like that where I just couldn't get rid of the ball quickly and the passing game wasn't working, a lot of times what I would do is run bunch formations, mm-hmm. and that way your quarterback can can watch that thing develop and zip that ball in there real quick on a short pass. Well, and, and what 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 they're get? Uh oh. Yeah. Ball goes through the back as Angel was in the punt. That's going to be a safety. I've seen two safeties in one game before. I know, I know. Donnie goes, uh oh. <laughs> Saw that coming. <laughs> the, uh, what I was going to say is, is Lexington Catholic has really given them an advantage when they go to trips. And I, I mean, with Cupcats on offense, when they go into a, a, a three receiver set to one side, they're really giving them an advantage. If they would just throw a bubble screen or a quick screen or even even a quick out or a hitch out there, I think they have numbers and can and can get a nice little play off of that. Yeah. And I don't think that's exceeding what their quarterback can do. No, especially to that slot back because the coverage on him is really loose. So. Well, we saw this happen earlier in the game when uh, uh, Lexcath couldn't uh, handle the uh, punt, went gave the safety to uh, Covcath, and now we see it go through Angel and give the safety to Lexcath, and the uh, Knights now lead it 15-5, to five, and they'll get the uh, kick here from Covcath. Yeah, one of the things, Gary, you, you know, over the years you and I have talked about, and you may always made a big point, is the kicking game is so important in these high school games. When you have two teams that are pretty even, mm-hmm. you know, it makes a huge difference, the advantage in the kicking game, which is the snap, you know, it's part of that. And I, I honestly don't I, – I can't ever recall a game that I've ever watched or been a part of where there's been two safeties. So Matt uh, Klaska will uh, kick off, the left-footed kicker for the uh, Colonels. Akbugu and Thompson back deep, but they'll have to kick it from the 20, so they're up around the 30. Here's the kick. It will be good kick. Thompson takes in about the 27. There's Andy Thompson, 35, 40. Andy Thompson, 45. Andy Thompson midfield. Here's a flag down to the 30. Thompson up the sideline, 10-5. Touchdown, but there's a flag down at the 40-yard line. Don't know who it's against. Andy Thompson with about a 70-yard punt re- uh, kick return, but there is a flag down, and it's going to be against the uh, Knights. So bring it back. Exactly what you and I were talking about, Coach, with Andy Thompson yeah. at halftime. Yeah. He, he's, got, he's got all the skills in the world. He's really quick. And uh, running kicks and punts back is a skill, too. That uh, And he does that very well. He does it very well. He's going to be a big weapon, and uh, with the injury to legend Brumball, folks just tune this game. The uh, starting quarterback for Lex, he went down, what, in the second series or third first series? series? First series. First series of the game and has not been back in, Coach. We don't know the full extent of that injury, but uh, it looked like it was in the shoulder area. No, I've, I've, I've known Legend for a while now, and I wish him nothing but the best. Right. I know he's worked really hard to get here. And was having and a terrific season. A very speedy recovery. Jalen Jones, here's J.J., cuts it outside, and then lowers that shoulder nice. and punishes the That's defensive you player. Run, the coach? That's an excellent run. That's what I like to see. I like to see a guy who wants to get that extra yard. Hey, you, you mentioned before, Gary, you said it. Every point, every yard is important in a game like this. And when you fight, when, you, when you're an offensive lineman and you block and you look up and see a guy like that running the ball hard, that really helps you. Lego gives to Jalen. He's got a room. He's got some room. 40 all the way down to the 35-yard line. That's a nice pickup there for uh, Jalen of about 13 yards. Jalen Jones, he's well over 100 yards now, Coach, as you already referenced, 83 in the first half. Right. He just took himself out, take a little rest, I think, just going to catch his, catch his breath. They have no answer for the inside zone right now. No. Oh, he's cramping. Timeout on the uh, field. <laughs> He's cramping. Called by uh, the Coveny County the Colonels and Eddie Eviston. Uh, 4.54 to go, guys, in the third, 15-5, to five, and another big uh, series here. But, you know, let's talk about Kirk Fago, guys. Uh, really settled in, has thrown some nice balls uh, here in the second, now into the third quarter. Once he settled in and realized he was going to be the guy. Well, I think that the staff's done a nice job of of play calling within what he can do. I really do. And and when I was a coach, and I'm sure Coach Meehan was the same way, you know, we had a script for our backup quarterbacks of plays that we knew they were good at that they could run, and that's Mm -hmm. when he had to come in. That's what you ran. You always have to get number two ready, and especially when you get in the the preseason – Try to find time when you can just get them with the first team and, and run as, as many of the plays as you can. But by the season, Gary, you know what this guy can do That's and right. what he can't do. 
And don't give him something that he can't do. Don't put him and, in, a, in a position where he's struggling. And you've also got Andy Thompson who can play quarterback. Right. I mean, he can throw the ball a bit. We saw him try to do that earlier with him, with the, but he had to run it. He wasn't right. able to throw the ball. But you've also got Fago and Andy Thompson. And you got Jalen Jones back in there. And he's got the ball. Jalen dancing down to the 30, to the 25, and he's down to the uh, 10, cuts it back five, and up in it inside the five, but hold. there's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage, and looks like it's going to be holding against Lexington Catholic. They've got to, they've got to figure out a way to straighten that out because these big gains are going to wear on, on, uh, on Jalen. I mean, he's got to have some confidence that they're going to block and keep and, and block correctly. Well, they've obviously got the advantage right now. I mean, they've got Covcath on their heels defensively, but then they shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, they've had several penalties. I mean, just they just had a kickoff return for touchdown call back on a hold, and now they had another uh, another huge run, if not a touchdown call back on another holding penalty. Well, now that moves them all the way back to the 44. A go shifts Balserac. Bals he's got it, and Balserac hit. Woo! Knocked backwards there, and he's going down. Balserac, the young man, when they did not have Jalen Jones against Boone County open up seat, he rushed for nearly 100 yards in that game against Boone County. He's a hard-nosed kid. He, he's, a, you know, he's one of those guys that goes north and south when he runs the football. And, and uh, again, that time he ran into a wall. Well, he, he took that zone play just a little bit too laterally, I think. A little, a little too wide. Twin receivers out to the uh, top and the bottom for Fago. Kirk back to pass. Rolling to the left, starts to break down. Fago sets, throws, coming back with the ball, and let's see what the official says right there. Let's see what they, they called incomplete, said he was out of bounds. Coach Perry is probably uh, he's probably just chewing his nails about these holding penalties. Uh, too so big you're holding at, penalties. You're, you're second and 20, you're, you know, you're third and 20, and, uh, you know, you don't have a whole lot of plays in the playbook for that. Yeah, I was just going to ask you what plays you came up with at Franklin County on, <laughs> on uh, third and 20. Well, uh, if you're playing an aggressive defense, it's a little easier than when you're playing the one that's going to drop back and play zone. I noticed that, uh, and I, I wonder if this is the same uh, the same uh, defensive lineman that was cramping up on the last play, but uh, they had a D lineman that, that's cramped up yeah, for, it's, for, uh, number, uh, for Cuff Cat. You're right, it's number uh, 74, and as we look mm -hmm. out here in the light, we can see that's Luke Shields. Luke Shields. Oh, he did? He was he was cramping uh, he was cramping the play before I thought or maybe he got hit and he was just limping. This is a big uh, a big series here for for Covenant Catholic. Now if they can force a punt and even you know hey bad snaps we've seen a lot of them tonight. You just you need to get uh, Covenant Catholic needs to keep uh, keep Lexington Catholic from getting the first down here at least. Keep them from getting to the 30-yard line where they can go for it on four. He's got an empty set, and they're showing press. Coach uh, Perry wants a timeout, I believe, with 4.04 to go in the third, and the uh, Lexington Catholic Knights 15-5 to five leading uh, Covington Catholic. Uh, tonight on Night Vision, of course, we want to thank uh, Collins uh, Bowling Lanes, you know, Collins uh, Bowling Lanes uh, Center Eastland and Southland Bowling Lanes. It's a Lexington family uh, business since 1959. Get over $90 of bowling, food, and drinks for only $39.95. Collins Bowling Lane Centers, where your friends and family come out to enjoy everything bowling. I tell you, who doesn't love to bowl, guys? Think about it. When you're sitting around or you're with family and you're bored, let's go bowling, right? Yeah. No, I didn't mean that the way it sounded, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? When you're looking for something exciting to do, <laughs> you go bowling, right, Coach? Well, going to a bowl game at the end of the year, that's the kind of bowling I care about. <laughs> I got you. That's the bowling coach hey, man likes. Speaking of going to a bowl game at the end of the year, it, yeah. if, if Kentucky can pull this one off, that to me, that ensures a bowl game as far as I'm concerned. But if you look at those, at their uh, schedule the rest of the year. Third and I would expect some type of a screen or something here. Third and 20, the 45-yard line. Nope. Here's – Go set, and he is going to be dropped by who else? That defensive end, that is Steins, Jake Steins. He's been a beast tonight. Honestly, I thought that's why Coach Perry called that timeout because they've they've showed to be very aggressive up, up front. You've got a young quarterback, and you've taken you've gone in an empty backfield without an extra protector back there for him. And I thought they were going to either set up a screen or do something to help him protection wise, but obviously they were trying to get the first down. Yeah, they, that look, a tunnel screen or a flare like a screen. From that formation, it's pretty valuable. And here's the uh, punt. And wow! Oh, it's going to be touchdown at the 25-yard line. Middleton, uh, the punt. 
That's where the uh, Colonels will have it. 324 to go in the third. And Lexington Catholic, you know, but Lexington Catholic's had some great opportunities here, guys, but penalties have right. absolutely just killed them in the last couple of series. Well, and, and they've been very aggressive. They were very aggressive on that they, they, on that punt. They, there's been a couple punts that they've come after, and they've not set up returns. And luckily they got a bounce because, again, they didn't come up and field the punt. Yeah. See what Mayer does here for Eddie Eviston and the uh, Colonels. Triple receivers to the top. Mayer rolling to the right, being uh, pursued there. Mm -hmm. Mayer sets and throws, and the ball is going to be underthrown. Nearly picked off at the 45 as he underthrew the pass. Again, it's the intended shot. receiver. He did, but really good sportsmanship there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy. The, yeah, that yeah. was uh, Middleton who uh, was coming after him, guys, a defensive end number 11. Well, he helped him up after he knocked him down. He pat him on the back and said, you know, you all right, buddy? Mayer's a tough kid for a sophomore because he's a good size he sophomore, 6'3". But, again, I think they're just searching. They're searching for something that will work in the passing game. And well, Lexington Catholic is f making him want to throw the football the way they're playing. trips, I think they have an advantage. If you just throw a screen out here right now, you could throw it to the outside guy, throw a hitch, and you've got you've Mayor's, got five easy yards. Mayor's going to tuck it up to the 32. You know, they've only been able to manage a 41-yard field goal by Klaska and a, a safety. That's the only points Cupcast put on the board here tonight. They're trailing 15-5. to five to Lexington Catholic, and I give credit where it's due. Lexington Catholic's defense, they've bent, mm -hmm. but they haven't, you know, they, they no, haven't broke. they've had really nice field position. They've done some really good things, uh, special teams-wise, the, in the return game and put themselves in some really good spots, but haven't been able to capitalize. Third down at the 32-yard uh, line. Mayor's going to tuck it. He's hit uh, just short of the first down at the 35, about a half a yard shy. Mayor. You know, I initially thought that play was going to be a big play, but they flew to the ball. They came up they came up quick and made a nice play right there in the middle. Well, Lauter, Lauterbach and Mitchell making the play there defensively. You know, your, your, your linebackers, secondary, they work forever on pass plays and how to drop back and get back in your zones. But when you don't think the team's going to pass, Donnie, you can come up there really quick right. and make tackles. Fourth down Watch. and... Watch for the long count, Gary. Cupcath yeah. going for it. Mayor might try to – he's going to slide right, give, and they got the first down. McGinnis to the 40. Stiff arms a man up to the 43. Young ball came out of their late, but it might have been out of bounds before anybody could get to it over there, and that's going to be the case. But uh, good job there by uh, McGinnis, Ryan McGinnis, the senior. Boy, the stiff arm at about the uh, 30 – Eight or 39-yard line guys really freed him up for about another five yards. Well, that was disciplined football right there too, because they went they went on a long count, which I you know I don't care what what level of football you're at, it's it's a fourth and short, and sometimes it's tough for those guys up front to hold their water. But they did a nice job on the long count, and then were able to execute and get the first down. First down on the McGinnis run at the 44-yard line for the Colonels. Here's a. Uh, Mayor back looking. Mayor's got time, throws it, and it is going to be McGinnis knocked away at the 22 yard line. Knocked away. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see the Andy reason Hickey. to take the home run ball right here. Now you're, now you're in another second and long situation. Yeah, you know, you're, you're 10 points behind. You're driving right, you're the football. You just got a big first down. Right. You know, you're, you're, you're willing to go for it on fourth down. That shows some courage. Just pound them with the ball. You're not out of this game by any means. Triple receivers to the bottom at the 44, second down and 10. Mayor, quick pass out to the near side. He's got Angel, Angel midfield, and spun around down to the 45-yard line. He's got the first down. Hickey coming up to make the play. But Angel, and that's that guy you like, Coach Man. You've been talking about Angel, and he's got a couple big catches tonight. Yeah, we're, we're looking at the monitor here and pointing at the wide receivers out here. The coverage is very loose on that outside receiver. He became a blocker that time. But, uh, again, there, there are some things like the Catholics giving him. But, boy, they're taking away some things, still too. Still up top. You still could do the same thing up top right now. Mayor fakes to McGinnis. Mayor sets up, throws downfield, and uh, it's incomplete. Trying to go down the uh, middle of the field. You know, France. they've gotten some guys over the top, but they just haven't been able to capitalize. And, and you know, I, I think if they'd be just a little more patient and, and take that underneath stuff like they just took there, got another first down, and, again, they're in another second long situation. Early in the game, I commented on the fact that they were making really good calls on first down. Right. They were picking up four and five yards every first down, and now they're getting none. Yeah, they, they can be very effective with second and six, second right. and five. 
Second down here at the 45 of the uh, Lexington Catholic Knights, a minute 33 in the third quarter. 15 to 5, Knights on top of the Colonels. Colonels have the football. Mayor to quarterback. Cuts it out to the far side, being pursued and to the uh, 40 and finally pulled. The ball comes out of there late, and they're going to say he was down by contact, so that will not be a fumble. Mayor, the ball carrier, picked up about five yards. Now that is not running. Good bad level, is it? No, no, you're taking a lick. The uh, the wide receiver that time was uh, the, the, the defensive back was on that wide receiver, in the, the, the short side of the field was 10 yards deep and backing up when the ball was snapped. McClure splits way out to the bottom. you got to watch him out there, but he's got a good cover, man. And looking right oh, is Meyer. Nice. Uh, Mayer throws in incomplete over the, on the slant, trying to go over there to Sumi, Ian Sumi. That was just a quick slant, guys. That might have been the best pass of the night. As well, and they had it down at the bottom, too. They had the slant open at the bottom. Uh, when I say the bottom, to the left side, I'm sorry. They had the slant to the left side as well. Yep. Just zip the ball past the linebacker's ear and try to get it in that in the, in the hole, and it threw it pretty well. Hickey back deep to receive the punt, coming here from Angel. And apparently they didn't get the uh, timeout. playoff or timeout called by – Looks like Kev Kath. Looks like Lex Kath might have called that timeout. They 54 did. seconds, guys, here. Third quarter, 15-5, to five, and it's turned out to be a really nice evening. It's cooled off, and, of course, we had a, a driving rain, a no mm. storm, but just rain in the first half, and it's subsided. It turned out to be a pretty nice evening here tonight. It's a, it's a really good night for football right now. The temperature feels more like fall out there. and uh, That's what we like. Both teams are battling. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good game, good defensive game. Yeah, it is. I'm really impressed with uh, a lot of these defensive players for Lexcath. And how can you not be impressed with Jake Steins and Cam Butler, the defensive ends, and the linebacker, uh, Shelton, for Cub Calf? Their defensive front has done some really nice things. They've just struggled to stop just the, the inside zone play. Yeah, and I, I'm not too sure about – you know, as far as uh, the penalty for, go, for go, how much he's worked on the penalty, that. coach. Me, excuse me. I think Cuff, I think Cuff Cass is going to go for it here after that penalty. They're going to go for it on fourth and about six. Shoot, they can almost kick a field goal from here. Well, especially with Casca. Here's uh, AJ Mayer looking. Sets right side. Throw. He's got a receiver, and he's got the first down down to the 25 yard line. And the uh, catch is made there by Ian Sumi. Sumi makes a catch. To the 25 guys, and boy, I tell you, that was a well-thrown football by Mayer. Well, he actually stepped into that ball and delivered a strike right there. But by the same token, he had he had a stationary target for one of the first times uh, tonight that he's thrown to. And most of the time, they've been on the move. Mayer with behind him is Dyer, motion McGinnis. They give now to Dyer, and he's down to the 24-yard uh, line. Pedroshi oh, making the nice uh, making play. the play. Nice defensive and play by Pedroshi. I'm not sure if Coach Eviston and Cup Calf will even get the uh, playoff here. There are 15 seconds left, so it looks like they may get it off here. And they're hurrying up like they want to get a play here in the third, don't they? Down to eight seconds. They have three on two on the outside. There they go. Quick pass, and he's got his receiver. Oh, he's going nice nowhere. Play. What a play over there. What a great play turned in That's a by. Play right there. Rawadi, boy, what a play by Rawadi over there. You could not ask for a better defensive play on the screen. Fought through the block and made a sure tackle on the hips. I, he took the blocker right into the receiver, didn't he? <laughs> yes, it was awesome. Well, we'll step out, guys. We'll come back on uh, Night Vision and produced by Prep Spin with the fourth quarter and Lexington the Catholic leading Covenant Catholic 15-5 to here at Joseph K. Ford Stadium. We'll be back after this. Lexington Campus Football. Visit their website at www.collegetable.com. Thank the fine folks of College, College Table for being tonight's game sponsor. And if you like the power of the Knights, then contact Athletic Director Brad Carter on how you can help support Lexington Catholic Athletics. As we enter the fourth quarter of play, it'll be third and ten for 
So far, all that uh, Lexington Catholic's given up is a field goal and a safety, but uh, Covcath uh, with that big fourth down pickup here, guys, two. on the march. They picked up two fourth downs on this series. Third down and looking as mayor, throwing oh. it high and trying to go uh, to McGinnis. They've got a mismatch out there when they go to trip sets, and the, and they're finally trying to take advantage of it. Yeah, that little out pattern by uh, by Picarillo out there. That was a nice a nice play call. Just threw it a little too high for him. I think we're going to see Klaska guys. We already seen it. We saw him nail a 41 yarder that would be good for 50. This is going to be about a uh, 42, 43 yarder. He's a left footed kicker this time from the uh, the right hash mark. Kick is up, and he has uh, off to the right. He had plenty of leg, but it was off. Wide right, 11.53 to go, and the field goal attempt by Klosko, 43 yards is no good off to the right. So Lexcath holds 15 to 5. And what they, I think what we're going to see here, guys, leading by 10, we're going to see a heavy dose of number 24. His name is Jalen Jones. I would say so, that and a little screen pass. Although Coach Perry, you know, sometimes he likes, he can to, fool you, yeah. he likes to go for the home run sometimes on these situation yeah but when you've got a running back like jones and you got 11 plus minutes you're up 10 i think you and you have i think you pound and ground it and you have a backup quarterback right. and as you well. have a backup quarterback. if you're just uh tuning in the uh night vision prep spin broadcast night legend brumball went down after in early in the first part of the ball game in the first series it was actually for go through the touchdown to jalen jones over the middle for right. that jones came out of nowhere cut in front of a cuff cap defender to make sure he catch the ball and then took it in 14 yards for the score we go, shifts Jones, and now back a little screen comes to Agbugu. Agbugu, 25, and he's spun around. Nice pickup about five. And that, that, that play probably goes for double the yardage if the quarterback gets it out in front of him just a little bit instead of behind him. It, it's, it's probably a much bigger play. Triple receivers out to, uh, to the uh, top for Kirk Fago. Bennington's out there. Looks like Thompson's out there. And Moores. Agbugu is to the uh, bottom. Jones is in the backfield. He shifts to the right side. They give him the football. He is up to the 30. He's at the 35. He's up to the 40. And a pickup of about 14 yards and a first down. Guys, that's exactly what I was talking about before this offensive series. You just got to feed number 24 because you're going to run some clock. You got a 10-point lead. Yeah, they've gone back to what's really been good for them the whole game is that little inside zone work. Well, and, and, and their O-line coach, Justin Kemper, is a, a, a new addition to their staff this year, and he's done a really nice job with those guys up front. As we said, Jalen Jones, well over 100. His best uh, game so far this year, Coach, without question. Would you agree, Jalen yes, Jones? absolutely. He's, he's got back to himself. Quarterback fakes it to the right side. He's going to be run out of bounds at about the uh, 46, maybe the 47. So nice job there by Kirk Fago, the quarterback. And if 10 minutes, 54 to go in the ball game. And if you want to know how an up-tempo offense goes into a four-minute offense, just what they, you watch what they've done on the last two plays. They, they run what we call a freeze play where they run no play, and then they get a signal from the sideline and run what they show. Again, that screen was thrown behind the receiver, which is what killed the play. But it was also a backward pass, too. I mean, I would be really, really careful with that. Well, that's a great play over there by the uh, – Colonel defense. You know, I'm an old Northern Kentucky guy, as you all know. Played at Boone County. Have called many a Covenant Catholic games. And I tell you what, Lynn Ray back in the day. But uh, Lexington Catholic has taken it to him. Now, here's Jalen. And, boy, J.J. says, just feed me the rock. I believe that was J.L. Yeah. Feed me the rock. I'm out here. Give me the ball. There he is right there. Got the big cast on the right hand. He broke the hand early in the preseason. And uh, he's saying, you know, I'm a senior. I was the region player of the year last year. There's a reason I'm out here. Give me the football. And Mark Perry hurt him. But I, I, I think what he does really well with the inside zone is he shows some patience. He's got really good timing with it, much better than much better than the other backs that they've had in here tonight. You know, they say hit that hole, but the thing you like what you, to back up what you just said is the way he waits for that hole right. to develop and gives his line an opportunity to open things up for him, speaking of Jones. And here's a quick pass far side and taking it down to the 43-yard line. And that's Bennington. And, Coach, you picked up on that earlier. You said that Bo Bennington was going to get a lot of playing from the Z position. And uh, he's done a nice job. He's caught pretty much everything. He's been thrown his way, number 17, Bo another, Bennington. Another holding penalty, driving the ball, getting first downs, Boy, getting those have been five costly. yards at a time, and then you have a holding penalty. 
And to go back where we were talking to about the zone, and I, you know, and I, I know Coach Mian was it was a staple when I was I, I got an opportunity to work with him some over at uh, Lexington Christian a few years ago. Uh, one of one of the things I always coach running backs on is, is slow two, fast through, which means you don't have to go full speed, but you want to press the heels of those offensive linemen and let that hole develop and then hit it. Right. Yeah, because there's always a cutback, you know. Jalen, there's J.J. Boy, he does the old circle spin move, and he's to the midfield strike. J.J. to the 45 and down to the 40 inside the 40-yard line. Jalen, and that gets the whole bench fired up. Look at that bench over there, guys. They're saying 24 is trying to take us to the promised land tonight. That was, a, that was a very, very heady play from an experienced uh, running back right there. He stayed in bounds to keep the clock running because he knows the position that his team's in right now. I also like the receivers. When they saw the cut, they were still in position to block, oh, yeah. and they got their blocks. And they got their blocks. Uh, J.J. Sealed. out here did a heck of a job. And, Coach, they sealed their blocks, the most important part of that. Yep, and didn't hold. Sure. And didn't hold. And twins to both sides. And we go looking over toward the uh, sideline for Lex Calf. 9.36 to play. Big drive here for the Knights trying to salt this thing away. Here's Balserac. Balserac. And he dances down inside. Balserac down about the 35-yard line. I like this kid, too. You know, he's not very big, guys, talking about uh, Brett. He's 5'8", 150 pounds, but he's he's shifty in there, isn't he, Donnie? Well, he got he got downhill a little bit better that time than the last time that he was in when he ran the zone where he got a little bit too wide, as Coach mentioned. And every, every team has to have a Balserac when you have a Jalen Jones because on the last draw, on the right. last run, and, and I like having two different two different styles of running backs that can come in and play right. for you because that, that puts a little bit more stress on the defense, especially if they're good ball handlers. That's right, right. and hold the ball and, and you know fifteen you to on. fifteen to five is your score. Kath, Lex Kath on top. Here's Ball Serac, and he's hit, driven backwards, and and very little gain there. Cam Butler. I, I don't know how many tackles Steins and Butler have, but it's got to be in the 15 to 20 range because every time we've called a tackle tonight, it's been big number 90 or big 82. And uh, with apologies to the linebacker, Shelton, those two have been making a ton of plays tonight. They have. They get to the ball really quickly. Third down and eight at the 35 for the Knights. And, Fago trying to bark him offside. Now he'll look toward the sideline. Eight minutes and 20 seconds of football remaining here. Joseph K. Ford Stadium. Gary Ball with Mike Me and Donnie Walker. William Warfield here on Night Vision Preps. A little screen over the middle. Knocked away and almost picked off by Butler. Big number 82 went up in the air, tipped it, and tried to tip it to himself and nearly had the pick. And that might have been a pick six if he comes they, up with that. They went to the well one too many times on that play. I think that's been a huge play for them tonight, and they tried it again. Yeah, you're right. This time they ran it to the short side of the field. Field, which is where I think they kind of ran out of room. Yeah, they did, and uh, really good defense play. I watched that one linebacker. He was back a few yards, and he recognized the screen right away and went to it. So McGinnis is back deep for oh. the Middleton, and Middleton with the scoop. Gets the punt off, kicks it, Pooch over the right side, rolls inside the 10. Lexi Catholic will watch her roll, and they'll down it at about the five-yard line. So if Covington Catholic's going to uh, score, guys, down 10, they're going to have to go about 95 yards to do that. Well, the big thing that Lexington Catholic did on that last drive is they ate up a lot of clock. They ate up a whole lot of clock on that drive. And, again, they did a, they did a super job. of. I, 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 I'll, I'm going to um, – Go back to what you guys were saying, and I question Jones coming out of the game. I he mean, took seriously. himself out. I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if, well, because he coached. If you remember that play, they t he carried about half their team down the sideline, <laughs> so he was he was he was whooped. He was yeah. tired. Well, you know, he can get a little bit of better shape. He's super athlete. Mayor and boy, what a nice throw over up to the 20 yard line. That's a uh, first down. Catch Getting was on those made curls. there. He's, he's delivered a curl very nicely. A stationary tar target. He's put the ball right on the money. Yeah, but those those throws we have to show, throw it over the shoulders down <laughs> deep. He's not been able to do uh, that. Anymore. McGinnis, by the way, made that nice catch. I like this McGinnis kid, guys. He can run the ball, catch the ball, does a lot of things out there for you for Eddie Eviston. Well, and I think they've tried to force it to him several times going down the field. Mayor, a little screen over the middle. This time he's got Dyer, and Dyer to the 23. Pick up of about three. Tried to give Lexcath a little bit of their own medicine. It's the same kind of screen pass that they ran to, to Jalen earlier for, uh, for a touchdown. They tried to do it themselves right there. Thanks uh, for all the folks watching tonight with uh, William Warfield producing on Night Vision. Thanks to all you folks uh, watching, and hope you've enjoyed the uh, broadcast. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. Donnie, uh, be good working with you next week over at Madison Central. Yeah, it'll be fun. Here's a pass that's caught. Far side to the 27-yard uh -oh. line. Uh -oh. 
thought we had a McGinnis. little skirmish, but we were just finishing the block over there. Out of bounds, the McGinnis got out pretty, of bounds. Pretty clean game. You know, we've complimented both teams, but there's a third team out there with the stripes that's done a pretty good job. Yes, they have. They really have. I like the way earlier in the game when they picked up that flag on that call that they missed. I was glad they conferred and did the right thing. Third down. Here's <laughs> it's caught. That's uh, McGinnis again, I believe, guys, up at the uh, 30. Yeah, McGinnis has become a weapon here in this game. We have 7.09 to play. Lexington Catholic here in the football game, 15 to 5. They have held uh, Covington Catholic to a field goal and a safety. And look at the schedule this Covington Catholic Eddie Eviston teams played. They played Cincinnati Cynix, nationally ranked Saint X team out of Cincinnati. Sycamore, one of the top ranked teams, and they lost by a touchdown to Ryle, who also beat Lexcat by a touchdown. Mayor, it's going to tuck it. Mayor up the middle. Mayor's got some room. 42 and finally spun around, knocked down, but he's got the first down of the 42 yard line. AJ Mayor. I, I tell you what, guys, I know there's some things that Eddie will work with this kid on. He's a sophomore, but I'm going to make you a prediction right now. By the time this kid's a senior, if he stays healthy, he's going to be a really, really good quarterback. Well, he's got some deceptive speed that he showed you right there, too. First down. Here's AJ Mayor. Back to pass, looking, throwing, and that is going to be uh, incomplete down at the 32-yard line. One-handed uh, there by McGinnis again. Lexington Catholic's front defensively is not putting any pressure on him right now. I saw the inside people, they're thinking screen. So, you know, they're okay. That's mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. But he's not getting any, any pressure from the outside, from the edge. And at times tonight, we've seen uh, Lexington Catholic come with the blitz, and we've seen it be very effective. So this might be a good time to dial one up here, second and ten. Well, I, I don't think they want to give up the big play and let them get some momentum and get back in this game. Yeah, they're doing a good job of letting the clock run. France goes in motion. The give us to Dyer. Dyer left side. He lowers his shoulder and gets up to the 48-yard line. Good running there by Grant Dyer, the uh, sophomore. Remember, Dyer's a sophomore. You got oh, some got good young flag. late penalty marker down with 6.38 to play. Give a shout-out to Ann Brueggemann. She's watching tonight, of course, wife of uh, Coach Kevin Brueggemann, the associate AD here at Lexcath. Shout-out to Ann and family over there. And, Coach, you've got them watching up in Pittsburgh and I do. And California. My, 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 my wife, Linda, is, uh, was listening. Uh, I'm watching at home. Shout out to Linda. You outpunted your coverage, Coach. But, but you know <laughs> I, that. I did. I, I outpunted my coverage big time. There's no question about that. And another penalty by Lexington Cat. I know. And, and that was a personal foul penalty, right? Yeah, it was a late flag. I don't know if it was a late hit or if they were jawing or what, what was going on. That was huge, guys, because think here, okay? You've got a 15-5 ball game, but if, if Cuff Cat, they get the penalty down, if they punch one in here and get a two-point conversion. Well, they don't even have to get a touchdown right now. If yep, they can get a field true. goal, they're within seven. Yep. Yeah, they need points. Uh, and, they, and they could get to the 30-yard line and easily kick a field goal. Triple receivers, Mayor looking that way. Quick pass out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And he's got France. France to the 40. And France hit. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Great job there by the defense for the uh, Knights. That's great defensive pursuit right there. Eli Mitchell there and Foster there as well. Yeah. They actually, that was a kind mark. He should have, that actually, that mark should have been about the 40 from where I'm sitting. 555. Here's Mayer. Mayer looking down the middle, and McGinnis uh, with the effort, and he dropped it as he went down to the 15. He's shaking up a little bit. And that McGinnis. was a nice downfield, down the field pass uh, for one, you know, one of the few that he's had tonight. It's kind of been the story of the passing game for the Colonels tonight, really. Well, that's one that he'd actually delivered. I mean, that one was right on the money. He should have brought that one in. But if they're not catching it and they, right. they need to get down and kick a field goal, right. there are other things that they're doing that are they're doing well. Lexington Catholic, Gary, I think is doing a really good job defensively in mm -hmm. this series. I Even do though they had that one big or the penalty hurt them. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing is they're looking up there at that clock. And they know they've got to score twice to beat them. Mm -hmm. They're slowing the game down that way to – well, and, up, they, I guess. and they finally they they've gone to a two safety look on the defense, and they've given up the middle of the field, which 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 is what they just tried to attack. And I'm you know that to me that was a good play call to try to get something right there. And you know he makes that play, and they don't gain another inch. They're easily within field goal range with their with their kicker. And like I said, you know they get three points here. They're only down seven, and you get the onside kick, and who knows what happens. Right, and they need to score either one. 
get you guys He's some scores here. We had we had somebody uh, brilliant just pointed out. Listen to this, Gary. I know you're so tech savvy like me. <laughs> Somebody's watching the game on their PlayStation Four. PlayStation Four. Well, yes. Good luck with that. Let me give you a score. Mail 35, too. Mail 35, <laughs> Trinity 13. How about that score? Ooh, I mean, Mayo. since you call me Mr. Mail Bulldog yeah, here, uh, well. beating Trinity, who's nationally ranked. So the nationally ranked Rocks might go down tonight. And and it was Ryle tonight over Highlands by 24. Uh, so is Highlands down this year? They must line? really they be down. Maybe be. they've had some injuries or something. Yeah, the quarterback got hurt. But I, I call you Mr. Boone County Rebels. That's Why is what that? I call you. Because that's where you're from, buddy. And it's our mascot up there, right? Yeah. You love the mascot. Yeah, the I Rebel. do. I, I, just lo- I just don't like the powder blue uniforms. So no, we got, we got some scores here, Coach. We got uh, Simon Kenton. I'm oh, sorry I lost it there, Coach. My bad. We've got uh, Caldwell County. I'd like to get a Simon Kenton over Dixie, 45-7. to seven. Newport over Bellevue. I'd like to get a Bryan Station Madison Central score since we're going to be that. over at uh, the Tribe's place over to Tribe uh, next Friday for the Madison Central uh, Lex Cath game. And who do you have in your ball report? This week, this week, Madison Central. See, they, there they you are go. the team of the week tomorrow. Dunbar got a big win tonight, 20-3 well, to need... over Eastern. Oh, nice. Wow, and Eastern good. winning that game 2-1. and one. Yeah. Only one loss, so what else we got, Coach? Brossert over. Tremble. Yep, Bishop Brossert. Coach is pulling up some scores here. and uh, We have an injury on the field. That's why, you know, we're kind of. Yeah, that was the receiver, I believe, that went down, uh, McGinnis. And, Coach, what else we got? There you go. Okay, got some more scores here. Uh, it was uh, Pikeville. Uh as we get that, of course, it comes up in the middle of the screen. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. It's a uh, Cal out of Louisville, forty to six over Oldham County. Pikeville, uh, Sheldon Clark, forty-one to six. Connor beat Scott, twenty-eight twenty-seven. Well, that was a good one. And the final again, Ryle, forty-eight. Highlands, twenty-four. Then you got uh, West Carter over East Carter uh, by a count of forty-nine to thirteen. Uh, Brossard won. Dunbar got the win tonight. Southern over Seneca, 40-6. to six. We gave the Simon Kenton score. Uh, Corbin beat Clay County. We'll give you some more of those scores. It was said, boy, Ryle put a beat down on my Rebels, 52-7. to seven. Ryle tonight. Ooh. Ryle's a good football team, Gary. I tell you, we, you and I have talked about that, how it's, uh, that, that whole area up there has kind of got diluted with talent now. Yes. And it's, it's switched around. It's gone to different teams. Mm-hmm. Connor? Yes. Connor, of course, Drew Barker, quarterback there a couple of years ago at uh, – Connor High School. Let's see what the uh, Colonels dial up here. Donnie Walker, if you're Eddie Eviston, what are you what are you what are you playing? I What's your call? I think you have to attack the middle of the field like he did on the last play, but they're playing a they're basically playing a Tampa two. Mayor as he attacks the middle of the field via the legs and takes it down to the 33 yard line. Fourth down and five. Now you got a big decision. Yep, you got a huge decision. If you, you, I mean, the thing is, your kicker has already proved that he can kick a 41 yarder, but he did miss a 43 yarder, but it had plenty of leg. Well, I almost wondered if they did that to set the ball up in the middle of the field to go ahead and kick it, but it uh, looks like they're going to go ahead and go. I don't know. I... So fourth it's down. Field goal. It's a long field goal. Yeah. For fourth down and five at the uh, 34. They got to get to the 29 for a first down. Do the Colonels of uh, Covington Catholic. Mayor looking. Went, now throws it and it's caught down to the 23 yard line by Angel. Brent Angel with the catch. That's a nice play. And you're right. Stationary target. Nice job. Again, election Catholic's doing okay, though. They're doing okay. There's five minutes to go in this game, and they're making them work for every yard they can right. get. Got to watch this. That's going to have to start thinking about speeding up the tempo of themselves here a little bit. Quick pass on the outside to uh, same receiver, Angel, who caught the last one. Pickup of about five. I thought he might go. He had Ian Sumi split way out to the bottom, guys. One-on-one coverage. I thought he might go out there because Sumi will go get the ball, but he'll like to go back over to Angel. Back-to-back catches by Angel. He splits out to the top. Here comes uh, Sumi uh, to the bottom. And splitting out there as well is uh, Logan Beagle. He's out there in the slot. Here's Mayer. Gives back inside. And Dyer Mm. dives down about the uh, 13-yard line. That was a great call. Yeah, that could have gone all the way to the house. Pretty good. It was third and short now. Uh, this is a big down, but again, they need the field goal anyway. So even if they don't make it here, they're in perfect position for the field goal. I still think they're taking too much time right now. The clock is their enemy right now. Second down on the yard for the uh, Colonels, and 
Mayer. High snap, Mayer pulls it down, and he's got the first down to the 10-yard line. First down for Covington Catholic, 426 to play. Lexington Catholic 15, Covington Catholic 5. Gary Ball with Mike Meehan, Donnie Walker, William Moorfield here tonight on night vision and prep spin. Donnie, it's a little bit better. They, they got to play real quick. They're ready to snap the ball when the Right, when the and they changed the defense out too now. They're going to be a little more aggressive. They went back to a single safety look. Trying to go to Sumi on the near side. There's a the guy I was talking about. He tried to go to Ian Sumi and uh, just threw it a little bit behind him. I think you're going to see a little bit more aggressiveness down here and see a little bit more man coverage than uh, what you've seen on this drive uh, thus far. Now, Calvin will play man on you. We've seen that in the past. This time, Summy comes to the uh, Summy comes to the bottom. They should be able to see what this. they do here. Mayor looking left, throws a slant, and it is going to be incomplete. Incomplete. Couldn't come up with it. Get un. I, I, I honestly believe that my mayor is better under center. Get him under center where you have a threat to run the football because they could run the, run the middle on that play. Four minutes, 15 seconds to play. Clock has stopped on that incompletion. Third down and 10. They can actually get a first down down near the goal line, can't they, guys? Looks like it. Looks like it They've from here. They've got to run box now. I mean, they could, be, they could run this ball. Mayor sets, throws, and he's got a receiver, and it is it's incomplete. Knocked away, knocked away there at the last really second. Nice play. Again, I, I'll have to go back to what I, what I said earlier. Quarterback's got to use his eyes to look off these uh, defensive backs because he's leading. He's basically leading the defender right to the football. Well, and it, it happens so much faster down here now. Once you're in the 10-yard you know, ten line going in where the where the, the, the – the field shrinks, and you got to make decisions a whole lot quicker and get the ball out of your hand a lot faster. Matt Kloska with the uh, field goal, 27-yard attempt. It's up, and it is looks good from here. It's perfect. It's 4 7 to go. Kloska with two field goals tonight. they got two field goals and a safety. And as you said, Donnie Walker, 4 7 to go. They've got this down to a seven-point ball game, 15 to 8, Lex Calf. So now you, the decision is you got four minutes. So do you do you play defense here and try to try to flip field position, or do you go ahead and kick it on side? Well, maybe something in between. An onside kick maybe or one of those – those little blooper kicks, you know, mm -hmm. that drop in in front because the ball's a little bit wet. The field's got to be a little bit wet. It's causing one of those people that aren't used to handling the ball yeah. to handle the football. And I want to make a – you mentioned – you referenced Boone County earlier, and I want to say something. A, a, <laughs> one of the great guys, Craig Mullins, a coach, uh, that coached – that played at Boone County and coached at Georgetown College, passed away uh, tragically. Uh, and they're going to honor him tomorrow at the Georgetown College game. And I think Eddie Everson's actually going to be there. He was Eddie's OC there at Georgetown. And, and I just want to say that – I think that's a great thing that Coach Cronin and Georgetown uh, College are doing tomorrow to honor uh, Craig Mullins. Yeah, the, uh, that, that's great. great that you pointed that out. So Lafayette beat Boone tonight, 56 to seven. So Lafayette rebounding after that tough loss to Trinity, and then Mayo got Trinity. So how good is Mayo, guys, if they can beat Trinity like that, who who beat Lafayette like they did last week? How good is Mayo? Well, you know, I, who knows how much weather played in tonight's. In tonight's games all around the state, I, I have no idea what the weather was like. Well, it poured else. down in this uh, game the first half, but it's been gorgeous here the second mm -hmm. half. No, it's felt great. Let's see what they do here. Kloska, let's see if they do the onside. Uh, looks like Lex Kath has got the good hands of the State Farm Troop up there. Good hands, folks, up at the uh, 50 and 40-yard line. Kloska is going to – he's going to kick right. it toward the pooch, corner kick. there, a little pooch kick, and oh, it's going to be – he shouldn't have touched that ball. No. He did he touch that it, ball go. I think he did. Thompson. I see if, no flag. If he lets that uh, – he knocked the – yeah, he knocked it out of bounds. But if he lets that go, they get the ball to 35, don't they, right. Coach? Right. They've they gotten about eight more yards on it. Yeah, the officials are talking well, about it. they got about 20 yards on that one. You, you know what else I'm impressed on about – how when Brumbo went out in the first series of plays, how Lexington Catholic has adjusted. Now the to official use a different quarterback has thrown a flag, guys. The official just threw a flag, Donnie. What was the flag for? I'm at illegal touching. Illegal or touch of the ball. Yeah, it, it's it may be not not illegal touching. It'll. I don't think on the play. Do you try to knock the ball forward, or you you I, can't I, do I, that? I don't know what happened here. Waiting, but we got the uh, Williams got the great shot there of the uh, referee, so we'll see. He'll let we'll let him give us the call. 
I thought Klaska might do an onside kick, but they're gonna put it on the 35. He found, yep. Yeah, so that's what the flag was for. They always throw a flag when it's out of bounds. They'll make them kick it again. I think is what they're saying. So that's a little perplexing. Oh, I don't understand that at all. Coach. No, I don't either. I'm I'm sort of lost right now. It's a conundrum. <laughs> but again, the referees con Spell conferred, and. Um, they're just going to re-kick it. Yep, re -kick Well, they it. did call a penalty on Lexington Catholic, so yeah. I don't understand what the what the penalty is. If not, the clock should be back at 407. Well, are they, are they going to kick? Did it, is there a penalty and they're going to re-kick from a different point? That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what yeah, it looks gonna like. Yeah, they're going to let uh, the uh, – now, if I'm uh, Cuffcath, I do an on, I do an onside kick, guys, because you're kicking. Even if they recover it, it's going to be the 35 yard line. Even if Lexcath recovers the onside kick. Well, yeah. this kick can easily put it in the end zone, so you you have to think about maybe playing defense as well. You just have to find a you just have to find an answer for the inside zone. Then again, he may pooch it again over around the 15 or something. You know what I'm saying? Like he did the last kick. Or, or drill it as hard as he can straight ahead and see if he can get it to bounce off one of those defenders. I just I still don't understand that. Uh, I'm the right. penalty. I'm kind of lost on that one. These are all questions that only the football gods know, <laughs> but we're trying to figure it out here. And the guy with the white I've got hat. got two football gods know. to my left here, <laughs> Donnie Walker and Mike Meehan. The, that uh, is a conundrum. That, that is does a conundrum. Have three U's in it? Is <laughs> yeah. that right? Uh, it's a national spelling bee going on up here in the, <laughs> in the booth. 406 to play, 15 to 8. And guys, this game's got interesting here it's in the last part of this game. Very interesting. This now. is a one touchdown ball game. He pooch kicks down, like I said, he probably would. Oh, Pick scooped up there by it. Thompson. Oh, Andy, no. he's got a room now if he gets a block, but he is going to be contained at the 15 and hemmed in 17 yard line. Good job by Andy to get that out of there. I tell you what, when uh, he got that block, I thought, man, he might go a while down that sideline. But that was a really good close job there by the uh, Cupcath kicking. It team. was a really good kick, too. I mean, that yes. ball was in a dead area yeah. where only he could get the ball. And it was in a spot where he had to return he it. He had, had no choice. He couldn't let it die there. Right. You got 357, and, you know, you're obviously going to give 24 some touches here. Absolutely. Well, and if, and if I'm Coach Perry, I'm not letting him come out of the game. 15 to 8. Lex Cath, 357. Jones shifts, and they give it to him. Jones hit, and he's knocked down in the backfield. No gain. He did stay. He did stay in bounds. He wanted to bounce that. You could see that he put two hands on the ball, and he just went ahead and went down. He didn't try to string it out and let them drive him out of bounds and stop the clock. And, and by the way, Maley helped out on that. He's got a brother, Luke, who's uh, used to play a catcher in Kentucky. He's now in the major leagues, guys. Made it to the bigs. Wow. Got called up to the show. Yeah, that was just recently. Yes. Luke Maley, the former Mr. Baseball. 3.28 to go in this yes. football game. 15-8. It's been a defensive uh, struggle. Of course, Legend Brumball went out in, early in the football game, the starting quarterback for the Knights. You take Jones. your time out if you stop this play, Coach. Yes. Jalen and Jones and up to right the 18-yard right quick, 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 quick. line. I see no movement on the sideline for one. Right. Call timeout now. you got three minutes to go. Don't let them run another, you know, they're, they're doing a good job from the sideline. Right, they're milking the clock Yeah, as much they as are. they can. Yeah, under two minutes, 2.59 to go in the football game. Third down and long, though, for the Knights. And uh, they've been running uh, Jalen Jones, but uh, Cubcath knows who they're going to give the ball to. Coach Perry's been in this situation before. He knows what he's doing. Jones, and he's up to the 20, and it'll be fourth and long. So they'll run the clock down as far as they, they can. But they'll, yeah, they'll call a timeout to stop that clock. Do, do you, um, okay, if this was early in the game, do you feel like that that uh, Fago would have kept that ball that time on the read? Because there was nobody out here. Yeah, I don't think they're giving him the option to keep anything right now. I think this is, that's all pure handoff right now. Brian Station did beat Madison Central tonight 50-20. to 20. 50, 50 to 20. 20. Yeah. Gotcha. And Paintsville won big, 40 to 3. So, Brian, Brian Station's eight. obviously, after We're whooping up on Cooper, they're obviously for real, right, guys? Yeah, they're good. You know, we mentioned that before. I think Coach Parks does a pretty good job over there getting them ready. Their problem was uh, last year, there's just some lack of discipline. Uh, there was way too many penalties against them. Got a nice uh, picture on Facebook, William, of somebody uh, watching the uh, game on night vision. And I got to so, get one of those smart TVs so I can do this stuff. I tell you. 2.33. Now you have to field this punt here. You can't let this ball hit the ground. And you got to have a good snap, buddy. Ryan McGinnis. Here's 
They're coming after Middleton got off. McGinnis is going to call a fair catch at the 48-yard line. Ryan McGinnis. To, well, that was a good job there with Middleton to get that punt out of there. I tell you what, that I, that's scary to me to come after a punt in that situation. Yeah. I mean, I know you've been struggling on offense, but you get a penalty right there. You put Lexington Catholic right back out on the field, and yeah, you only have two timeouts, and they can run the clock down. Yeah, that, that would have been the game. You're right. A roughing the a kicker would have been the worst possible thing to happen. I think I'd go ahead and set up a return on that, especially when you got a talented returner like McGinnis back there. Yeah, McGinnis has been all everything tonight, guys, mm-hmm. making catches, returning kicks and punts and doing it all. Crowd's alive now, Gary. 2.29 to play. France in motion gets a sweep. France at a 45 and upended at the 43-yard line. Pick up of about six. One of the few times they've been able to get the edge tonight. They Hickey. need to speed it up now. They don't have time. They don't have the luxury of taking taking all this time to huddle and do all the things that they've done so far. Andy Hickey was able to upend him, Coach Meehan, and knock his legs out from under him. Not before France got seven. Here's a pass right side. Oh. Uh, in. Summy there, and Summy couldn't come up with it. That's the ball he needs to catch. That ball was in a – it was a very catchable ball. He needs to go ahead and, and, and tuck that one away and bring that down and get the first down, stop the clock. Third down and four. Yeah, help your quarterback. You know, make that play. Obviously, in, in high school, it's – well, in any phase of the game, trust your receivers. Get the right. ball to them. Let them make the play. Third down and four for Cub Calf. 2.04 to play. That clock stopped now, that incompletion. Probably a one that uh, Summy wishes he had back. He split out to the bottom. Ian is. Here's Mayer. Mayer, wow. first down wow. to the 30. To the 32 is A.J. Mayer. Gets the Cub Calf sideline fired up. First down with a minute 57 to go. Remember, they're just a touchdown and a kick away from tying this thing up, possibly sending it to overtime. And I thought that play was dead in the water. He, he just did a great job of balance, put his hand down and, 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 and run it. A.J. Mayer looking clock, little quick pass over nice the block. far side, Good caught job, at the, down nice the 25 down. yard line. And it's uh, caught there by Tyler McClure. McClure, the X receiver, picked up about five. Roden uh, making the stop. Minute 34, second down and five at the 26. Mayer gives it now. Oh, no. Ball's fumbled and able to jump back on it back at the 30-yard line is Dyer, Grant Dyer. He fumbled it, was able to jump back on it, guys. Still no timeout. Clock is running down. Just the- How many does Eddie have left, guys? He's got two as far as He's got two timeouts left. He'll be using one after this play. Third down, Mayer, Mayer stepping up, throwing. It's caught, and McClure, I believe it is, down to the 15-yard line. Big play. And that was a little curl-wheel combination that they ran, and if if the, if the corner bites on that curl, then they were going to go for it all right there. But the corner went ahead and bailed, and that was a nice read by, by the quarterback to go ahead and throw to the underneath receiver. Pick up a 14. First at the 16-yard line for Mayer. Mayor looking quick pass oh. left side. McClure again to the oh, 10 wow. to 5 and down to the uh, five yard line. McClure. 49 seconds. They're using these first downs and then the clock stops when they move the chains and they're getting the time they can to call the play now. 49 seconds and the clock is starting right now. Grant Dyer's in the backfield with Mayor. First down and goal. Mayor's going to keep it himself. Mayor down to the uh, two, trying to get in. The official right there. Did he get in? And they're going to say no, just short of the goal line with 34 seconds. So they'll- Mayor's got to get his pads down. He, he can't stand up there and take those licks like that. That's, that's part of being a sophomore, I think, right there, Coach, in this situation, don't you? Yeah, I guarantee it is. But Because Lexington Catholic's pounding the football, trying to knock it out of his hands. I think Mayor thought he got in. He was looking at that goal line for a long time. Like, didn't I break that plane? He kept looking at it, but official was right there. We've got a we've got a game now with 33 a, seconds to go. We finally got a game, huh? Yeah, and, and Gary, you're doing a really good job of keeping track of the time too, because we don't see the time on on the uh, on the video, so people can't see that. 33.8 seconds, 15 to eight, and it will be at the uh, one foot line for the uh, Colonels. Of course, remember, guys, they not only need the touchdown, 
they need the extra point too. Well, I, I they know wouldn't go for two with that. I know, not, nah. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. Eddie's they in big need of a win. And he is, uh, and he's a gambler. Yep. You know, he's a, he's a, risk he's a riverboat taker. gambler. <laughs> yeah, he is, uh, but you know, but they've got it. They've they've got a real sure-footed kicker. I I think you go ahead. I think you go ahead and, and tie this game up. You've got some momentum right now. What would you do, coach? Yeah, I, if I was going to go for two, I'd do it off a fake kick. You know, just right. because they know they're going to really try to put pre- the defense is going to put a lot of pressure trying to block the kick, and that's your advantage when you run a fake. He has McGinnis Unbalanced. and Dyer, Mayer. Since France in motion, keeps it, dives in, and he gets in for the touchdown. Now we find touchdown out by Mayer. He's do. Makes it 15 to 14. Lex Cap with 31 seconds. He has not made a decision yet. No. Riverboat gambler thinking about it over there. He's going to go for two. Eddie looks like he is going to go for the victory. I love it. I just love it. This is just fun. With 31.7 seconds. We, we called it. We said Eddie Everson will probably go for the two points in the win. I, uh, I'm glad I kind of wandered in here tonight. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> Come on, Knights. Play some D here. Mayor, back to pass. Look, he fumbles the ball. Oh. Throws it, and it's oh. incomplete. He fumbled the ball to the air. Catholic stops him. And with 31.7, wow. it looks like the Knights are going to hold on, leading 15 to 14. He fumbled the ball up in the air, and that's what calls Mayor. He is frustrated and upset with himself, guys. Well, that's that's not his fault. No, well, and the ball almost got caught once yep. and twice by right. the man on the tip. Well, I, you know, I, I almost think in the back of Eddie's mind, you know what he's thinking is if they can get this onside kick, they, they can still kick a field goal and win this thing. Yeah. Yep. There was pressure on him, but, again, that ball popped up, and he did a good job of getting it back and, and releasing the ball. <laughs> well, now you know the Riverboat Gamblers got only one choice here. It's an onside kick. Yep. you got to do it here. Yeah. 31 seconds. 15 Gary, to 14, Lex Cap. Gary, I honestly thought that that ball was going to be caught in the end zone. I know. I really it did. looked like the second guy, like you called yeah. it, looked like the second guy was – but he was on – what happened is he kind of slipped in the mm-hmm. end zone, and he was kind of laying there, the receiver. Had he been on his feet, he might have been able to come up with that somehow. But – what a great football game here tonight. You know, we, we've had some great ones. We we go back to that uh, East Jessamine game back early oh. in the year, that 38 with Harrison County. That, was, that awesome. was a great one and another great football game. I mean, I know it's been a defensive struggle, guys, but, you know, when you lose your starting quarterback legend Brumball to an injury in the first part of the first series of the ball game, you're going to take any kind of victory you can get. And my compliments to the coaching staff from uh, Lexington Catholic because making that adjustment with the number two quarterback and just really, really playing good defense. Even that last drive, even though they did score. Their last game against Sycamore, they did an onside kick to start the game. Kloska didn't recover it. Kloska recovered the onside kick. But just being told by some of the uh, Cubcath folks. We appreciate all that inside information. Kloska, here's the uh, short kick to the far what side. But he kicked it out of bounds inexplicably. Not sure what he was doing there. I don't understand. Line that drive was. out of bounds. Unless if you're going to kick it that way, you're going to kind of squib it, don't you guys? Well, the only thing I can think of is he was aiming for a particular person. He was trying to hit somebody in the chest. That's the only thing I can think of. That had to be it. Otherwise, you kick it a lot lighter and let it bounce. That bounce so is what you want. They get the touchdown, guys, uh, Cubcap. They go for two. It's thwarted. And it's 15 to 14. And Eddie's Everson's over there thinking, hmm, maybe I should have kicked it. Yeah. I don't, no, you can't second no, guess yourself, no. though. What he's doing, he's saying to my football team, I've got confidence That's in right. you to win this football game. And the best formation you're going to see in any football at any level, the victory formation. Pago takes one knee and uh, no timeouts by a cup count down to 22 seconds. And that's going to do it, guys. And how about that? Tonight on Night Vision and Prep Spin, Lexi DeCatholic gets a big, much-needed win here tonight over a good Covington Catholic team, 15-14. to 14. And, guys, uh, there was some hitting going on there tonight. Really some hitting, some good defensive players. We, we saw from both teams some nice tackles and good way of uh, playing uh, defense. And, again, I, th- I just think it was really good coaching, too, on both sides. I agree strategically. I thought it was a very good game because there was 
there were a lot of adjustments made. You could tell that they were trying to probe things uh, offensively to see what was going to work on both sides, and then they did the same thing defensively, and it was a nice little chess match. And then you had you had the, you had the weather that played a factor. You had some 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 mishandled snaps on on some special team stuff. You had some big return stuff. So everything played a part in this game. Tonight. And you had some huge penalties too. Mm, yeah, that, yeah, I, that's something that Coach Perry and Coach Everson right. are going to tell their ball clubs uh, after this game, guys. Just too many mental mistakes tonight. And early when the when it was a lot of rain, it was some bad snaps on punts and right. so on. And and Donnie, you, you made a mention of something we didn't talk about, but it's something you and I both know a lot about. Running the freeze, they did a couple mm. times, and I think in the second half that was really valuable for Lexington Catholic. Well, it's hard philosophically. It's hard when you have a team that's up tempo that goes no huddle that always wants to go fast. It's hard to slow them down because they're conditioned to always line up and go fast. So the best way to do that is just to freeze, take your time, make it a play call. Because you make that defense stay in their stance, you have to make them get set, and then the longer those defensive linemen stay in the stance, the, the more they hate it. Well, the victory goes to Lex Kath, and guys, sometimes you got to win them a little ugly. You got to win them in a little bit of rain, a lot of rain here in the first half. 15 to 14, you got to hold the other team uh, from not getting a two point conversion. And uh, boy, I just take my hat off to Eddie Evans to know what, uh, what, what a gutsy call to go for two there in the win instead of the extra point to send it to overtime. Well, that's what they say play for the win on the road, play for the, uh, play for the tie at home. So, yeah, uh, he, that's the he, rule of thumb. He, uh, he went for it, and. and you know, I, and I'm sure he's put his arm around that quarterback and told him, you know, that's not on you. I made the decision to do that, and we're going to be in another situation like this before your time's right. through, and you'll, you'll make plenty of these throws. Next up for uh, Covenant Catholic is Beachwood. That will be uh, uh, next uh, Friday night. Next up for uh, Lexington Catholic will be Madison Central next Friday in Richmond, and we'll have that game here on Night Vision. Uh, we'll step out. We'll come back with some numbers and some post-game interviews and give you the final. By the way, the final numbers tonight for Jalen Jones, 26 carries, 155 yards, and a touchdown receiving and rushing tonight for Jalen. Is number 24 back or what? He's back in a big way. So we'll come back here on uh, Night Vision and Prep Spin 15-14. Lex Kath knocks off Cuffcat. What if you could do all your banking without ever having to run to your bank? What if you could do your banking from any stadium or city in the country? It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. With traditional banks, online and mobile banking, it couldn't be more simple. My life moves pretty fast, and traditional banks team protects me while I do what I do best, at home or away. Way to go, traditional bank. You scored again. Traditional banks, online and mobile banking. Winners at home and on the road. Traditional bank. Kentucky Children's Hospital is here to care for Kentucky's kids. From primary care to serious illness, we are specially trained to address their unique needs. Kentucky Children's Hospital is one of only two hospitals in the state with specially trained pediatric surgeons, a level four NICU for the tiniest babies, a pediatric ICU, and a 24-hour pediatric emergency room to care for the most critically ill or injured children. We are here to provide whatever care your child needs. Now you can support Prep Spin and buy a DVD of this game broadcast. We appreciate all the fan support out there, and we are glad that we're now able to offer you a chance to own this game broadcast on DVD. All you have to do is just follow the link in the video description below to order now. They're only $30 for a limited time only. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's ball game. Lexington Catholic hopes to pave the way for the future of high school sports broadcasting through this exciting new digital network. If you would like to get your business into the game as a Night Vision sponsor, please contact Delane Thiel at 277-7183, extension 253, or dthiel at lexingtoncatholic.com. Go Knights!
Are you a Kentucky high school sports fan? Do you know where to find the latest news and information on your team, your competition, and high school sports action across the state? Join the fun and excitement at BluegrassPreps.com. You can support your favorite team, test your sports knowledge, and share news and views at BluegrassPreps.com. For all the latest on Kentucky high school sports, other sports, and a whole world of lively discussion, get on board at BluegrassPreps.com. We're back here. We've got some uh, stats, and also we've got some uh, players coming up to join us up here in the uh, box as well. Jalen Jones, and uh, well, what about a uh, what about a game by uh, Hickey? My goodness, we looked at his stats, and here comes Coach Perry. Let's get him in here, well, as well. Coach uh, Coach Perry steps in here and joins us. And Coach, fifteen to fourteen, they went for two there. They yeah. that's your rule of thumb on the road. You go for the win at home. You play for the time. Yeah. I think it was the right decision that, that they made. You know, I, we expected that. You know, on the sideline, and and uh, I tell you what, I thought our kids. You know, it, it was a great way to find a way what your defense going to do in that situation. And. You know, like the way they stood tall and, and made a play. You know, that's what I said tonight on the broadcast, Coach. A great defensive game tonight yeah. by both. Cuffcast got a solid defense. Yeah. Your defense stepped up. How about Hickey? Twelve tackles oh, tonight. He he continually filled. They ran a little jet sweep, and he just continually filled the alley and made plays. And you know, real proud of the way our defense played. And you know, offensively, um, you know, we had an unfortunate incident there with with Legend. I think you know he he's going to be out for a little while. And Kirk came in and and uh, I thought managed the game well. And did what it took to win the game. You know, we, we, we don't need uh, to win by 100. We, we won by one, and we'll, we'll take the that, W. That's all that matters. Like that's Al right. Davis used to say, just win, baby. That's right. And, yeah, uh, I, I, was, I was impressed with, with your coaching staff making the adjustments with, with Kirk, you know, and especially at halftime because the, even the defense, the defense came to play the whole night, yeah. and, and they just made the difference. That last drive, they did score on yeah. the drive, but it took forever for yeah. them to score. Mm. Yeah. Your defense was just hitting them and hitting them and they forcing were. them to make plays. You know, we unfortunately, we gave up too many um, – too many yards in field position on our kickoff team. We just they, they started on the 30 uh, three times tonight because of just poor coverage, and we've got to get that cleaned up. And you look at, you know, special teams and penalties. Mm -hmm. uh, just the penalties are, are drive killers for us or drive continuers when we're on defense. You know, we, we get, have them down a third and ten, and we make a, um, you know, just a silly foul that, that um, it, again, is, is – what we got to clean up, but we we is getting a great win. Very happy for our, for our football team. We needed that, uh, but we've got a lot of work to do. And those penalties you talk about, coach, those are correctable mistakes. They you can are. you can look at the film. You can tell your football team how they can correct that for the next game. So that's something they're, you. They're very correctable. This is three games now. They've got to start correcting them. Yes. I mean, no doubt they're correctable, right. but we we've, we've got to play a lot smarter. Okay, I got a question for you. We were going we're. we're Going nuts up here. What was the penalty? What was that thing on the on the well, kick? Well, they said that we batted the ball forward, illegal batting, and it went forward. Which um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Looked like me, it went to the sideline from up yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was. Um, you know, Andy knew the ball needed to be out of bounds and you know maintain possession. You know, uh, can't fault him for that. But it's a learning point that that you know if we're going to bat it, I guess bat it backwards or you know let it go out of bounds if it's that close. But yeah. Um, you know, again, those those are things we can learn from and help prepare us for for uh, you know moving forward. Yeah, Madison Central's up next Friday yeah. night over in Madison. Uh, yeah. They lost their first game tonight to Bryan yeah, Station, what was that score? Uh, fifty to twenty. Fifty to twenty. Okay. So uh, you'll have Madison Central next Friday, and we're going to have that game right here oh, on great. Night Vision as well. Awesome. But but coach, uh, your defense, I can't say enough about uh, the way your defense stepped up tonight, they holding uh, holding them to fourteen points. They battled. I, I was real proud of the way they played. We played a lot of guys, and they stepped up, and made plays when we needed to make plays. And JJ, how about he? Jalen Jalen yeah. ran the ball now. Yeah, I tell he you, uh, he he is a tremendous back, and I thought, you know, again with our passing game limited with the, with the rain and with the injury, uh, you know, I thought Jalen came in just he, he's he's a really nice football player. There's a reason he was well. district player of the year last year, right? There There's is a reason. A reason. Well, there thank you, reason. coach. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks, guys. That's Mark it. Perry. Thanks. Let's get to Jalen and uh, Hickey in here as well. Jalen Jones, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, Let's look at this uh, body of work here tonight. So we're going to come all the way back here and uh, talk to some of these uh, fine st uh, star players. Let's get uh, Jalen Jones in here. And Jalen, uh, tonight, uh, 26 carries, 155 yards. And basically, uh, 
especially that one run when you carried about half, half the Cuff Cat team that your sideline erupted on. Uh, what was going through your mind after that run? Um, I just wanted to play my hardest for my teammates. This week we went to work. We knew we had a lot of things that we needed to work on. And every single time I touched the ball, I just was doing it for them. That was my motivation. How tough has it been on you? You broke the hand early in the preseason. You got the cast on it. I know as a great running back, you know, you got to feel comfortable holding that football. Are you getting back to that comfort level? Well, it was a hard thing to adjust to. But uh, I just got a certain mindset, and I was just I wasn't gonna let a broken hand, uh, let's say, uh, defer me and mess up the way I play. Right. I was gonna run hard no matter what, every single play, and I was gonna fight every single for every single yard no matter what for all my teammates. That's that's my motivation every single play. What did you tell uh, Kirk when he came in there? Legend got the injury to the uh, collarbone, and what did you? I mean, listen, that 14 of 18 passing by Fago, 94 yards, and of course you you cut in front of that Cupcath guy. You were making sure he wasn't going to get the football, weren't you? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, I just wanted Kirk to make sure that he knew that we were there with him and that he can do this, and he definitely did. He stepped up. He did what he needed to do, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of him. Um, I knew he could do it, and uh, we're just going to go to work, and he's going to get better. We're all going to get better. Yes. I was really impressed uh, with your offensive line, too. Those big old guys, they come in there, and when they saw that your number one quarterback went out, <laughs> there wasn't any hesitation. They just opened the holes. They're blocking hard all the way down the field. Receivers are blocking down the field. It's nice to have that kind of backup, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. There were holes everywhere. All I had to do <laughs> was all I had to do was just pace myself and then just hit the hole every single play. And the linemen, I couldn't thank them enough. They worked their butts off this game. Now, that's a good point. We talked about that up here. When you run that read play and that zone look, you know, it's, you're supposed to go slow and accelerate fast through the hole. And I think you've got, being an older yes. player, you've got that down pretty good. You kind of look for that hole, don't you? You have, to, you have to make sure you see your hole, and then once you see it, you have to make a decision, and you've got to hit it you got to hit it harder than you ever hit anything in your life. Well, a uh, great win tonight. I know it feels good to get the W. You guys got Madison Central next Friday, but you can uh, you know that you beat a, a real – I mean, Cub Calf is, is a pretty good football team. They were team. extremely talented team. We yeah. knew we were coming into this game this week, preparing for them all week. But, Jalen, congratulations, our star of the game, 155 yards, two touchdowns tonight. And keep – well, okay, I'll shake your cast there. Thank you, young man. Thank you so much. And last but not least, I just want to wish my mom a happy early birthday. It's her birthday oh, tomorrow. Nice. Love you so much, Mom. All right, great nice. job. Happy uh, birthday to Mom out there. Let's get well, – Let's uh, bring the tough guy in. Yeah, let's right? bring the, uh, the young man in here, uh, Andy Hickey. I tell you what, uh, w before this game tonight, uh, is there something about Andy Hickey that likes playing against uh, Kevin and Catholic? I mean, you were all over the field tonight. Uh, I just wanted to make a play this week. Um, we've been focusing on someone had to step up and make some plays these past couple games, and I felt, it, I felt it upon me to make those plays. I mean, I've never faced Cuff Cat before, but we prepared for him all week. I knew what I was coming into, and I just wanted to make a difference on the field. Twelve tackles tonight, Coach, and we called his name a ton of times tonight out there. We did. Twelve tackles, that's that's darn good for a high school football game. Absolutely. Really and also uh, the, the job you did, you know, covering people back there, you know, making sure but because there's a lot of uh, mm -hmm. crafty receivers out there for Cove yeah, I mean, they, they had four or five of them. They had, they had a lot of people, and so they had some fresh legs, and our, my coach just told me to get deep, get depth, and come downhill, and that's what I did, and I was fortunate to make some plays. Now, you came downhill real well, too. You came downhill <laughs> real hard. We were really impressed with that. Uh, let me ask you this. When you prepare during the week for, for this team, it's hard to match in practice to match the kind of stuff, that speed and the kind of things that they mm -hmm. do. But I thought your whole football team, your whole defense did a great job. On that last drive, they did score on the drive, but I've mentioned before to, to Coach Perry and other people, that was a really good defensive uh, job because you mm -hmm. made them work for every every, every yard. Yeah. And penalties hurt you a little bit. They did. Uh, our coaches were telling us, they said, we're going to be on the field one more time. we got to make a play. And as soon as they scored, I just said, who wants to make this play right here? It's not over. And fortunately, they went for two, and, we, and someone made a play, and that's what we wanted to see. Yeah, 12 tackles tonight. Uh, really a great uh, game for you, almost a, a career. But I know there's a lot of great games ahead of Andy Hickey because, uh, I mean, you're a quick guy. you got some speed. Uh, you don't mind the contact. You like that. Contact. You love to hit. So, uh, and Madison Central's up uh, next Friday. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are going to get uh, right out of what, Monday, and get ready for yeah. the Indians over in Richmond. Mm -hmm. Next Friday we'll have that game here on Night Vision. Yeah, they always give us a tough game, so we're, we're going to be ready this week. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Hickey. Great ball game. 12 tackles Super tonight job, for the young man, man uh, for uh, Lex Kath. And appreciate all our uh, guests. We'll take a break, come back, and wrap things up here from Joseph K. Ford Stadium, where tonight Lexington Catholic knocks off Cuffcath 15 to 14.
Welcome back to Joseph K. Ford Stadium where Lexington Catholic pulled off the big win over Covenant Catholic, 15-14. to 14. An exciting game. Donnie, we we're really glad to have you with us tonight. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Let's take real quick, since you, you spent a lot of time with quarterbacks, talk a little bit about these quarterbacks and what they did tonight. Well, first and foremost, I, you know, I want to wish – Legend, a, a speedy recovery. He was, he was, he was having, a, you know, had a great first series, and they were off to a really fast start until he went down with the, with uh, apparently a shoulder injury, uh, and hopefully he's, he can come back from that and finish out the season. But he looked great, you know, from the start. And then they brought in, they brought in Kirk Fago, and and uh, his first, the only thing he did and it, it was throw a touchdown pass as soon as he came in, came on the field. And I thought they did a nice job. Uh, I, I thought that I thought early on they tried to run the full playbook with him and realized that uh, that wasn't going to work, especially with the weather. And I thought they made some nice adjustments going throughout the rest of the game and doing what he could do and running to his strengths. Uh, and, and then he got more and more uh, confident as the, as the night went on and, and did a much better job. And, I mean, we wound up being 14 for 18. Yeah, in fact, I think that's a really good point. He improved as the game went on. And when they gave him some things that he could handle and things that he could do well. What about uh, what about the quarterback uh, for uh, for the uh, Covenant Catholic? He did a great job, too. Well, I thought he got better, too, as the game went on. Now, I don't know if that had anything to do with the weather or not. I'm sure it did a little bit. I'm sure it played some part in it. But I, I, I thought, you know, I, I have to think that this is a learning process with him as well, with, with Eddie and, and, and his staff over at CuffCath. And I think they found some things tonight that he did really well. I thought that he threw to stationary targets extremely well. He threw the curls and the hitches uh, extremely well tonight. He struggled throwing downfield, uh, you know, but then at the end of the game, he put some balls. He, he hit a slant that should have been caught. He hit a post route that should have been caught. And so at this point, you know, they, they've just got to get it all put together. When they get it put together, they're going to be pretty dangerous. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think that the Covenant Catholic football team is going to get better as the year goes on. Um, we've seen Lexington Catholic. Now they've adjusted quite well with uh, Fago in there. And, and they're going to get better. And Jalen Jones, he's going to get healthier. And right. he's starting to get where he can. he's reading the zone plays just extremely well right now and running the ball well. And Gary, um, coming back to you real quickly, yep. uh, I really had a lot of fun working with Donnie. Yeah, it was, I think uh, it was a good time. Uh, look that forward, fun. look forward to it, Coach, yeah. next Friday. Enjoy your, uh, by the way, score tomorrow night, South Carolina, Kentucky. Oh, I'm going to say uh, Kentucky 35, South Carolina 21. All right, we'll go with that. And yeah. What do you think, former Wildcat? Oh, I tell you what, I'm, I'm a little worried about that one. I think <laughs> I think Kentucky's going to have to score 35 to win the game, yeah. but, but even then, that might, might not be enough. You so. know, I, th- th- there's a, there's a chance of rain down there tomorrow. It's yep. the only reason I'm going to go with only 35 points because I think that offense can put up 40 a game against pretty much anybody. They're, yeah. they're explosive. I know that uh, they had a they had a, a lull last week for just a, for for a few minutes in the in the third quarter there, but. Uh, they can be really explosive yep. as long as those, those guys can stay healthy. Well, great job, uh, guys, tonight. Look forward to next Friday as Lexington Catholic will go to Richmond Madison Central, 730 kickoff here on Night Vision and Prepsman. For William Warfield and uh, King of Stream, and for uh, Coach Mike Meehan, Coach, you have a great trip next week. We'll Thanks be back much. in a couple weeks. For Donnie Walker, this is Gary Ball. Your final score, Lexington Catholic 15, Covington Catholic 14. Thanks for watching here on Night Vision.